This week's episode of the Deck Chair and Yums podcast is brought to you by I'm pretty sure I've got a fucking concussion. <laughs> I was boxing with Sean Haggerty this morning. He punched me in the mouth. I don't like boxing anymore. We've got a guest on. It's Colin Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> seamless. seamless. Absolutely. Fucking seamless. So, what's yeah. the crack? <laughs> <laughs> I'm exhausted. This is, uh, so, Mr. Murphy's only our uh, fourth guest ever. Fourth guest? Mm-hmm. Well, he's only my second. Only your second, that's right, yeah. We had the Tom Stade was on. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. A couple of months ago. Um... And I immediately want you to tell the Then I story. went to Fintana. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't here at that stage, actually. We didn't oh, get yeah. it. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it was fucking unbelievable. <laughs> Fintona. <laughs> I, uh, I immediately want you to tell your Tom Stade story from Queens, but I don't know if we're allowed to. Oh, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We can't this say is where one. things get maybe light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll give you five minutes of warming up before we go down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, he's a powerful man. Powerful man. Big, big, big fan of the, the stage star now. Who's uh, back in Oma on the third of March? By the was way, was he? Yeah, I haven't seen him in a long time. Is he? St- he's still in Edinburgh. Yep. Yep. La- last time I seen him, we did our podcast, which was maybe what last year was. Last it? year would have been yeah. He'd stopped drinking. He stopped smoking. <laughs> and uh, at one point, he must have sensed that I was nervous, and he was like, "It's okay, man. I'm just doing it for like a tolerance break." <laughs> 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 you must have saw my face go fuck if he stops drinking we all have to stop drinking <laughs> like, he turned up to do a gig in uh, in Queens and uh, came in and he announced hey Colin I stopped drinking because I'm going on live with the Apollo and I don't want to mess it up <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not drinking I'm not smoking I'm not doing anything anymore I'm not going to until I do the show I went okay and then at the interval I arrived into the dressing room and he was drunk <laughs> <laughs> Well, when he initially came back last year, because I always pick him up at the airport, river, so again, he told me that he was all, and I thought, nah, same thing, I thought, this is not going to yeah. happen. But then when it actually lasted after the gig and there was no, it was like, I'm going back to bed, I was like, oh, fuck, he's serious. Yeah. And it's it's quite unnerving. Definitely. <laughs> I remember a similar story. I was doing, I opened for him in Queens years, maybe 10 years ago. So I went to the wee fridge getting a few beers and stuff, and I'm like, do you want a beer? And he's like, nah, man, not drink beer anymore, I'm getting fat. And then he pulled a litre bottle of vodka out of his back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he finished it before, before the show yeah, was over. You know right, mate. <laughs> Fucking machine, man. I drank, we did the, the Edinburgh stand together. We had a, a week over Christmas, or leading up to Christmas. So I was standing the wee, the wee flat across the street from the stand with Stade. Uh-huh. And it was, I've, I've never had so many hangovers in one day. Like, <laughs> there was a point where we were drinking. Everyone went to bed. It was just me and Stade drinking. And we were like, right, let's go. It's eight in the morning. Like, it was daylight in Edinburgh oh. in the winter. Oh. So it was probably half oh. 10 in the fucking morning, to be honest. And uh, I said, Mom, we need to go to bed. So as we were walking down the hall, he kept talking to the point where I went, I can get another drink. This is fucking tech. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't shut up. Yeah. Yes. He's a machine. So that was, uh, so the other two of them were McCann and McCarney, but you weren't here for them. Oh, uh, yeah. Or yeah. McCarney R.I.P. McCarney R.I.P. Sorry, I forgot about that. You're not allowed to mention the Mark word here. Beat the jaws off. It's just because he's your opponent. Oh, right. Yeah. Is that who you're actually... Yeah. Batting? Yeah. Killing is the word. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After this morning, I'm not entirely sure. What's the height difference? There? We're about the same height this way, but belly size, I'm about th- three stone heavier than him. Am I? I'm bound to be. No, you wouldn't be that much heavier. I don't think... No, he's not really? that big. He'd have a longer reach because you're we. We T Rex arms. T Rex arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's one of the problems that I'm having. He just holds his hand out, I guess, and just hits. Yeah, it's like it is. Yeah, I've got the arms of a of a, of a dwarf. Uh, I don't know. But How's everybody feeling about the the uh, you know basically you know putting your body on display there for a, a crowd of a thousand people? I'll tell you this much, Colin Murphy. I <laughs> bought some. Uh, so we basically have to be a red team and a blue team. Mm-hmm. Split the two teams, and I bought some boxing gear. And the tank top, I thought I could probably maybe slim into For a that. Tank top, yeah, because mm. yeah, I don't want to, I mean, I want to show off my tattoos and stuff. Right. But it's was three boxing, three boxing vests. But is it technically <coughs> called a tank top? Well, if you're a tank guy, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I'm a tank, but it's a slurry tank. <laughs> Round here, it's a wife beater. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I put I put the shorts on, and my girlfriend said the words, "You can't leave the house wearing those," and I quote, "Because I can see your entire helmet." And I was like, what do you mean? And she just started poking me in the willy, going, that's exactly, that's a dirt. That's the top of it. Look. You'll need another wee guard for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like a spoon or something. Yeah. <laughs> like, or a shovel. Teaspoon. I mean, uh, yeah. But that was, uh, 
Yeah, I think I don't know what was more upsetting the fact that she you could see the outline of my willy through my shorts, or the fact that even though I've been boxing for about th- you know six weeks, I couldn't stop her hitting my, my lower half. <laughs> you, you, you couldn't parry her away. Parry, yeah. <laughs> the only arms. Exactly. <laughs> Like, how dare you? And then she stopped moving, I couldn't see her. <laughs> that mean you can only wank sitting down. There's only way you can reach it, is it? Oh, no, that's massive. <laughs> <laughs> Was it maybe more that she didn't want you leaving the house because then people could see it and then people could see and then people come up and go, sorry. That's, Just, it. that's, that's exactly what it is. And especially if I'm nervous as well, it's going to be that. Do you know when you get nervous and you release the wee triangle? Yeah. It'll just be that wee yeah. baby's nose. Yeah. <laughs> maybe a wee... A wee cup, as you say, might be a bad thing. I think yeah. we have to wear cups anyway. You need to, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. mine, a teacup, it'll not be a full mug. <laughs> <laughs> Espresso. <Ooh. laughs> I don't know where to go. I know, it's... Uh, mm. Making all things right. So. If that goes down again, I don't know if that's a metaphor. No? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think... But then, do you know the thing is? I don't... I really don't... I This was my idea. And she and Todd and Patty McDonald have kind of taken over in the run yeah. of it. And now I have no idea what's happening. So yeah. apparently we were supposed to fight for two minutes. Then it went down to 90 seconds. And then everybody realized we're all fucked. And now we're only fighting for a minute each. Like a, a minute? Min- a minute round. Three minute rounds. All right. Um, so, yeah, I have no idea what's happening. I know the sh- everything that I've bought to wear on the night doesn't fit. <laughs> so the tank top. Have you bought small. it to go, but I'll get into it. I did. Oh, I, initially, I'll slim yeah, down like a wedding. Yeah, yeah but now it's going to be I'm like, yeah. We're going to keep it hanging up my hall, Liz. Yeah. I'm going to wear that in the beta. You wait and see. <laughs> I'm on Fleming. Have you got then? a fighting name or anything on it? No, dude, I haven't thought any of that stuff yet. Have you got a, a gown and everything? Have you got walk on music? I've got walk on music. Right. And that's it. That's as much um, as it went, as far as it's gone. As far as I've gone. Uh, are you ringside? Are you doing the. It's commentating, yeah. 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 And are you doing the whole. Well, with... I don't know if I have to do a ring announcement or, or just commentating on the sides. Because there is a live stream, isn't there? I think. There's... I don't know yet. So they're still trying to work that out. So basically, because it was. Nobody expected to sell out that quick. Yeah. So it sold out in five minutes or something. So it sold out before you see another press conference. Aye, one. Which is a, <laughs> so it took me it took me twelve years to sell out the Ulster Hall yeah. to get, and get paid for it. Yeah. And in five minutes, people go if, it's, if you're getting beat up, we'll fucking go watch that. <laughs> <laughs> watch that like, outside of Chippy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for nothing. Yeah, just come to one of my gigs and hit me. Yeah. Like, um, so yeah, so the live stream. I think they're talking about they're trying to figure out a way to live stream it. Mm. Um. My lips aching. <laughs> so sore. <laughs> and, but I think the light, yeah, because it'll all depend on what the Ulster Hall Wi Fi is like to, to actually yeah. stream it. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Um, it may just be a record to, to broadcast later, sort of Yeah. Right. But I don't really care. I just, I just want it over with now. I'm <laughs> so sick of punching stuff. Is there we, a proper referee? Apparently. I, uh, Murph, full disclosure. If I turn up and there's no ring, I won't be fucking surprised. <laughs> <laughs> if I turn up and somebody's going, we're doing this in the car park, lads, I'm like, all right, I expected that. <laughs> like, Everybody turn their headlights on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll hold the coats. Yeah. <laughs> no, there'll be, uh, I think, yeah, it'll be uh, It'll be quite the spectacle. I, I think it's going to be an annual event. It's going to go down. But are you going to, uh, how's your commentator going to go? Are you going to be in the slagging mode? Are you going to take it seriously? Or oh, I'll take it seriously. Well, yeah, I'll be yeah. With, uh, some of the some well, of the comedians are taking it far too seriously. Really? Well, I won't mention any names, but he does a podcast about tea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I've seen some videos of him hitting stuff, and I'm like, fucking hell. He's, he's, who's he? He's on it, like. He's, he's fighting, fighting Johnny Bow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Johnny the only way Johnny wins that is if he still has his glass in his hand and fucking hits him with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not fair. Like, there, there's so many. Who, who was it? Wait, that the side of these. It should have been. No, it That's what my argument is. Like, I thought it was the boxers. The coaches yeah. have to win it. Yeah. yeah, but Pete Giffen's fighting Sean Haggerty, and Pete's about twice the fucking weight. I don't know him. He's he, one of he the looks like Homer Simpson. Oh, and, right, yeah. uh, I mean, if he well, no, could, do you know him? Yeah, if he connects, he's gonna fucking. That's not but to it's, do with how good the boxer. What's been weird about those two is they've been slagging each other off, and I think they've agreed to slag each other off. Uh-huh. But it's gotten so out of control that you're like, I think he's probably gonna try and kill each. <laughs> like, it's gotten real personal. Real it's quick. weird. I've uh, I've interviewed um, boxers uh, on the panel. We used to yeah. boxers on quite regularly, and with Katie Taylor on uh-huh. before she was Katie Taylor, and um, and. Uh, they were, they were looking disgust because I just I was like asking boxers like how do you hit each other the first time you know, you know when you start you know <laughs> yeah. it, it's a weird thing to do you know, at least in a in a you know, in in a pub yeah you know you've been goaded into it somebody's you know yeah there's you know, a preamble yeah, yeah there yeah. is a bit of preamble going what do you say to me what do my hair say that <laughs> hey you on your brawler come on 
<laughs> and uh, like, what's wrong with this jumper? <laughs> and um, <laughs> but uh, in you know in in the boxing thing, everybody's there and they're all and they know each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the thing. I said, you yeah. all know each other. And he says, yeah, yeah. It's a small circuit. It's like comedians. You know, everybody right. knows each other. And then so how do you deck someone? He says, there must be a comedian. You want to hit him? I ah, see how you do it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, but, that was this morning, Sean Haggerty hit me. The first punch. Yeah. Like, we did the wee handshake. He it up. Wee, and he just cracked. That's exactly what the one, I can't remember who it was, said it to me. It might have been your man, Duddy, from there. He said that, uh, he said, the first punch is hard. The second one's easy. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember, we did, I think we did it together. Did we do a pilot for a, like a sport panel show? And Marty Rogan, the boxer, was no, on it? I wouldn't no? have done that, no. And I remember, I always remember him, because it was, um, Bernard O'Shea was on it. Uh-huh. And he was like, so what happens after a fight? What do you like to do? And he was just like, I just want to go out and fuck with steaming. That's it. <laughs> Smoking fags, drinking pints. Fuck, that's all I want to do. Just steaming. And so he's like you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did it before the fight. That's how he fucking much of an athlete I am. Uh, and he, but Bernard was asking, like, do people ask you to hit them? And he was going every night, every time I'm out. Yeah. They were going, would you hit me? And because he was, he, this was all sort of promo. Well, it wasn't promo for a fight, but he was in that mode of like, fucking promoting a fight mm-hmm. and uh, it was the only time that he was he just dropped his whole persona and he went he looked at me I don't know why they always fucking look at me <laughs> and he goes Mick not messing about <laughs> he goes see if I punch in the arm I'd fucking break it and I was like I didn't ask him I'd take your word for it I'm trying to eat this fucking free salmon you got in the green room <laughs> like, well I had uh, Andrew Katie Taylor and said well, like when you go to punch somebody like how fast are you and she went, and she looked at me and I went, no, no, not me. And Jalamir was on the show with me. I said, do it to him. <laughs> and he went, what? And before he said what, she punched, but it's like it stopped like that far from him. Oh, yeah. And he just went, oh, because he said, I actually felt the air. The air coming yeah. out from the speed of it. Yeah. Be he said it was, oh, and it was like a blink and you wouldn't see it. That was, we were sort of sparring with Sean McComb and it was the same thing. You, just, you saw his hand coming back. Yeah. yeah. And you go, I almost died. There's a guy I went to college with and he used to do kickboxing and he was uh, he's from I think he's from Lurgan possibly poor mm-hmm. guy and uh, all the martial arts people yeah, well, we're, we're mad and scrap and, <laughs> and uh, he said uh, the the world champion at the time I think was from Port Down Lurgan that direction what? Yeah, yeah years ago this was uh, in the 80s and uh, oh no he uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, uh, he he said we were sparring and he came down to a bit of a demonstration thing so they asked for a volunteer and him and he comes on and he was in the ring this guy's like six foot one but a big string bean of a fellow uh-huh. And uh, so he was there and all ready to go. And your man says, you're right. And he went, yep. And then he says, he woke up outside the ring. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last thing. He went, yep. yep. And he, and he went, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? And he says, well, uh, he said, apparently he kicked me in the side of the head and right out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> so this is always a bad sign when you have to ask, what happened there? Yeah. <laughs> I go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't play the replay from here just to see Next what thing I heard was clear. <laughs> <laughs> Six foot of dark oak. Ah, uh, that'll be. <laughs> you smell incense all of a sudden. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that's what we're hoping is going to happen, McCarney, isn't it? Right? It's going to be. It's going to be a killing machine, is it? Or you, I do believe you're going to win. I think you will. I the the, th- the problem with me, and I've said this the whole way through it. The problem with me and McCarney boxing each other is neither one of us has an ounce of aggression. So I reckon what will happen is we'll start laughing on the way into the middle of the ring. Yeah. We'll laugh for the first minute. They'll go right, boys, sit in your corner, have we drink of water. We'll laugh some more, and then in the last thirty seconds, one of us might throw one punch. I see. see I this is the thing. Entirely, yeah. I was going to say. I, I, I love. Love, I love the optimism. What a fucking yeah, I love the optimism. <laughs> but when you have eight hundred people yeah. roaring at you, and then they're starting to boo you because you're laughing and you aren't um, fighting, <laughs> it'll soon change. And then I, they hit you in the lip, and then you're. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you that's a queer we. That's a queer we lump you have there. I was, it, it wasn't. It wasn't the punch that did it. It was. All right. It was. Yeah. It was. It was the Vaseline afterwards. Yeah. It was. I burnt myself. It was it's an allergic reaction. Yeah, cold sore. I've herpes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm riddled. I'm absolutely riddled. I'd rather be riddled with herpes than admit I got hit in the face. <laughs> it was so sore. I see when he did it as well. I was like, he just bust my lip. Like a straight well, away. Right away. Oh, oh, straight away. It was like that Eddie Murphy sketch. With the <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's your fault. It is your fault. But, um, your, uh, are you going to have like you know when you sit down in your corner, you should just have like Bucky. It should. I'm thinking something like that, yeah. yeah. I've said, like, if, we were, if we were allowed to, I would love to light a fag for you and hand it to you well, in, see, the, that's in the, the corner. The, the majority of my training has just been watching the Rocky movie. <laughs> and at the start of Rocky 1, he does smoke during it. Yeah. So I'm like, well, here. Rocky, you know, man. 100%. 
Colin, this will be my biggest problem is to try and um, erase the Rocky movies from his mind. Because like, every single one. fight he thinks <laughs> it's a Rocky movie. <laughs> <laughs> like when you get in that ring, it's not a Rocky movie. You need to, you no, know. but it's going to, it, yeah, it will be. It'll just be Rocky 3. I'm going Rocky 3. <laughs> That's what I'm aiming for. Oh, you're aiming for 3, not 4? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not going to go 4. I've never gone for I've only ever seen 1 and vaguely 2. Oh, head. you missed the best You've one. missed out. Three first and four, one's brilliant. First, first one's, one's phenomenal. Uh, and Fourth 3 and 4 more. They're not even boxing movies. They're just... 80s cheese 80s action movie aye. Aye, they're Top Gun yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Top Gun and Gum so Cubes so they're, they're absolutely <laughs> just like Gum yeah, it's Top just, Gun it's tur- turn your brain off <laughs> 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 yeah they're 100% just turn your head off yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so anyway Mr Murphy you're yeah. here because uh, you're going on tour aye with you I love, with, us, with yeah. me best name for a tour show ah, it's uh, watch him McCollum uh, no, uh, I think uh, it was um, Chris uh, McCausland's is Speaky Blinder. He's <laughs> <laughs> my favourite. That's really good. Yeah, he's a blind That's comedian. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Speaky Blinder. And the other one is uh, John Richardson. Um, in a way, he's always wearing his cardigans. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, his new sh- tour is called uh, Nitwit. <laughs> That's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but Speaky Blinder is just brilliant. I also remember it was Joe Lysett had That's the Way, Aha, uh-huh, Aha, uh-huh, Joe Lysett. Yeah. yeah. And then everybody copied it. That's oh right. yeah! So I've seen Glenn Moore has went. Will you still love me? Will you still love me when I'm Glenn Moore? Uh, or when I'm sixty, Glenn Moore, whatever it is. I've seen. And I think Sean Moss did something similar, did he? Yeah, and Carl Donnelly used to have like. Now that's what I call. Now that's, that's what I call Donnelly. Now that's what I call Donnelly. He might have been the, the first one for us. Right. Joe Lysen might have been ten years this year because yeah. I had the first time in 2013. I seen it. I thought, fuck, that's brilliant because he did it in the like in the font of. The, now that's what I call music. Yeah. The first one that I saw like that. Oh, uh, uh, a song title was um, um, Noel. Um, oh my God, his name retired and moved away and lives in Australia or somewhere now. Um, he owned a com- comedy cafe in East End in London, and uh, he was originally from Ireland. Lived there forever and ever. Used to comp here and there, and he had Tourette's. And he had a show in Edinburgh called uh, Shake, Rattle and Noel. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Which was Fuck brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deadly. I can never think of a name for a show. I should know, by now I should be like, right, think of one fucking name. So when yeah. they ask you what it is, you can just... Well, I'd look... Did you go through... Ones, I was going to say, did you have a few other yeah, options? Had, yeah, okay. uh, um, so the last one was Colonisation. That's right. Yeah. And then this one's Watch McCollin. And then the other one I had uh, was Colonoscopy. <laughs> Great. And Very Semicolon. Good. And uh, but then I thought, no, the, the people just think this is going to be, you know, it's a middle-aged man on stage talking. To me. <laughs> <laughs> talking really want a arse. whole hour of that, <laughs> <laughs> really, and then semicolon or something makes it look like I can't, you know. And uh, yeah, yeah. It's a, as a as a show about a rector, just fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I thought, nah. uh, stand there talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yes, you're uh, third of February. Uh, you start. Yeah, and it in, goes for in Larne. Three months. We're uh, out yeah. For, Lauren's a good place. Lauren's the only gig because it's in the Leisure Centre. Have you ever done a gig in the Leisure Centre? No. McNeil Theatre. It's in the Leisure Centre in Lauren. Oh, right. It's the only place you can go for a swim and a gig. <laughs> so you're doing the gig and you can smell chlorine. It's, it's, it was the last gig we did. We, we were there the, before lockdown. That was the last one we did before the thing happened. Yes, that's right. And so it was all, you know, bump fists and all this and kicking each other at oh, that yeah. stage uh-huh. of the COVID. And... Uh, they gave us they were very hospitable and gave us big platters of sandwiches That's backstage. Right. And I was, I was very concerned. I don't like waste. So uh, they were going to go to waste, just the two of us. So um, yeah. I know. Well, <laughs> even he turned them out. <laughs> and uh, so I handed them out. As Thought you do at the beginning you. of a pandemic. Here, take a few sandwiches and pass them on. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole room is like, three sandwiches. Three sandwiches. It's free sandwiches. Bump your fist, yeah. kicking that. But here, have a sandwich. That's I'll f- feed it to you. Why not? <laughs> 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 Boys picking through their fingers and nodding like. Oh, I, don't, I don't like. I hear. Do you want the rest of that? <laughs> That's a mine. Similar thing with that was the. I can't drink my water in Antrim. Right at the start of the pandemic. What? So I was doing. Oh, don't bring it up. T- oh, no, sorry, I'm, not, I'm over it. No, it's all right. I'm over it. I've got my aggression out through, through the, through the, the science, the, the sweet science. So I had. I was doing the top of the town in Antrim, mm-hmm. which is just a wee bar gig, and I had a glass of water to take on stage, and I went. I hope you don't mind if I just set this on your table, to. This big fat fucking bastard. <laughs> big fat yellow t shirt wearing her and his big fat fucking ugly wife too. Just sorry, I'm I'm having a flashback. <laughs> Told you. And I set the water on the table and he picked it up and stirred at me and drank drank out of the glass. And I could see it all backwashing. 
and I was and I, he was I was that angry. I just I just I couldn't fucking. Oh, but if I ever fucking see him again, I swear why? to God, because he was a fat greedy whore. Call that's why big fucking obese jippo. Fucking oh. easy now. I told I you you're gonna sorry. be triggered. I told I'm you I was gonna I'm be, sorry. I'm sorry for stir body shaming. Emotions. But he was just a fat bastard. Like, <laughs> do you know, like the back fat spilled over his chair? Literally, the chair was a backpack with legs on it, and he drank my water. But he looked at me. That's the thing that fucked me. Staring at you. He yeah. stared at when he was doing it, and. There's no comeback to that. I know. There's nothing you can do to There's that. There's nothing I It was fucking genius. I was just a completely dem- demasculated. Demasculated? Aye. Demas- dem- Demasculated. Demasculated. <laughs> but that, yeah, I was right at the start of COVID. Yeah. And I remember being, because nobody knew what COVID was. We still didn't really know what the crack was. And yeah. I couldn't even think of a COVID joke about it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I just yeah. went, oh, yeah, fuck it. There's no mention of quarantines or lockdowns Aye. or anything. I sort of sit the best stage like, yeah. God. I sure remember that. That was a good old days. We're past that now, sure. I'm stressed again. <laughs> I'm all not thinking about it. <laughs> <coughs> so yes, if you turn up the calm show, please don't drink his water. No, but uh, I was looking like so. There's basically every place in the north. You're sort of yes. So if you're listening to this, uh, find us somewhere. Your uh, local area will have us there. Yeah. So. Uh, Do you ever tour in the south as well? Do you? Yeah, not in. Uh, it's pre that pre COVID yeah. but no, not since. Um, I tried doing. It, I did a tour the last time. I did a proper tour. Down south, I hadn't been on telly down south in a long time, <laughs> and I thought, ah, they'll still remember me. No, then, <laughs> and uh, yeah, some places were really good. Like I was doing, played the Everyman in, in Cork, and, and nearly sold it out. And Dolan's did well in Limerick, and Galway sold out. And you know, places like that were grand. But then yeah. you were playing, yeah, Navi. strange satellite places, <laughs> and you're going, okay. <laughs> And yeah. uh, no, come back here again. Um, yeah, so I think one place was 10 people, I think. Oh, lovely. Yeah, 22 Jeez. and another. There weren't massive rooms like there were, really, yeah. uh, but still, 22 people. And you're thinking, ah, oh, five of those people paid for the petrol to get here. And uh, I'm driving home after this. Cancel the B&B. <laughs> 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 Maybe no stay yeah, over I can't afford it. I <laughs> and forget the chips. <laughs> on the way home that I was looking forward to. <laughs> Smart, how you have to ration yourself. Oh. There's 22 people, can't eat. Yep. While, the gig, while the gig's going on, you're counting them. I'm going, that's the PR. That's <laughs> <laughs> them three are the venue yeah. hire. Yeah, <laughs> that's the engineer. That's just them. Right. So, right. as long as these four people laugh, <laughs> I'll make a chip. I've made my money. I remember opening for, opening for Jack in 2012, I think. And we did Dundalk or Monon or somewhere. And it, yeah. it was that weird thing of even though it was just over the border, yeah. nobody watched. BBC oh, okay, yeah. you know, yeah. and it was I mean fucking I think in fact we actually did one but Keith didn't sell it that well either yeah. but the one with Jack there was me and Rory Ward were opening for him and Jack came into the green room and went you two fuckers made more money than I did like. <laughs> and he was paying us 50 quid a gig <laughs> <laughs> no we're doing yeah we're doing Dundalk it's the second Dundalk, night yeah. Dundalk yeah spirit store that's a great oh, venue awesome. brilliant oh, it is fucking great is that yeah. so good on my tour <laughs> <laughs> sold 30 tickets for it. <laughs> so are you in the Spurs story? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. Okay. Yeah, that's brilliant. Well done, Doc. Uh, Letter Canny the other one. Yeah. And then Green and Letter Canny's brilliant room. Oh, that's a Big room. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah brilliant. Plenty it's always been good, actually. You've always got a good crowd there, actually. Yeah, yeah no, it's great. Um, yeah, but uh, and then I'm probably going to go down to Galway and uh, Cork as well uh, sometime in the spring. Do those. Uh, Cork, brilliant. And Galway's I've brilliant. I've never played Cork on. Hmm? I've never played Cork. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last time uh, I went down, uh, yeah, I couldn't have. I would be the same as, yeah. <laughs> same as Jake. Yeah. Bring your own fucking chips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How are you getting there? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a lift with you? Uh, yeah, I turned up to do Cork once. I used to be uh, in the city limits in Cork, and, and uh, I did a gig that years and years ago, and I got a phone call to the hotel room. And Brian that runs it said, uh, good news and bad news. I said, all right, <laughs> we'll give you the bad news first. He said, the headliner from Dublin, sorry, from London, uh, he, it's fog bound, so he, he can't make it. Oh, right. And I said, okay. And he said, and the compare and first act, uh, sorry, the compare, yeah, is, is he's in Dublin and the train's broken down, so he can't. And I said, okay, what's the good news? He says, you're here. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the first act. So I had to do the whole gig. <coughs> so he says, you can either pull the gig, and I'd walk past to go into the hotel, I'd walk past the crowd that were queuing up to get in, and it was up the street. Aye. And so there was like maybe 120 people, 130 people. 
And uh, I said, you have to kick them out. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to give these people their money back. And I went, well, I'll do it. So I just thought I'd do it. And that was the first time I'd done anything longer in 20 minutes. I well, did the whole gig. And you did the whole gig? Yeah, it was brilliant. <laughs> That's like, yeah. unreal. It was great crack. It recently happened. Did you hear the story about McCartney and Ennis Gillen? No. So Mark McCartney runs a gig in Pat's yeah, yeah. Bar. And uh, about half an hour before show starts, he had William Thompson, Aaron McCann, and Jordan Robinson, I think. And they were all car sharing. And he gets a phone call just like a little bit half an hour before the show. I, he's sort of pacing, worried about him. And they're like, um, Mark, there's a bit of a problem. We're in Charlie's in Straban. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> wrong way. Not only wrong, wrong fucking county. And the th- like, and McCartney's sitting there going, I have 120 people sitting here. That, that's three of the stupidest cons in one car. <laughs> that is absolutely the worst thing I remember where they were playing. Yeah. Arne McCann's MoMA. <laughs> he had to drive out of OMA and go to Straban Road. To g- I was like, McCann, how did you not know? Like, when you pass the fucking folk park, do you not think, this is not the way they're going to scale I didn't even... What a useless bastard. So they had to make their way. McCartney then had to do 40 minutes on stage to the audience to wait for these fuckers to land and get from Strabane to Ennis Gillen. I had one, I was uh, at home and I got a phone call from the agent to say, um, so you're nearly there yet? I was hmm? going, I'm only getting in the bed. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she said, you're where? And I said, why, where do you think I'm supposed to be? And she says, oh no, you're supposed to be Andrada. And I said, well, I'm genuinely getting into bed right now. And she says, there's a room full of people. The first act's been on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the compare. And your stomach just goes. Oh, that would be. And uh, she says, yeah, there's 100 plus people in, in a club and draw to waiting on you. I said, well, nobody told me. And what, who, who's, who's issue was it? Was and well, there's a bit uh, of a cross a wires. Of nobody told me. Yeah, a bit of debate would be the word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And um, did you obviously you had you couldn't have made it in the time like there was no way you were no going to this was <laughs> years ago it wasn't like a solo show and it was just a club gig it was years and years and years right. ago and uh, so I said well, well you know just have to tell them I've broken down or something and we'll reschedule it and I was like oh my god the fear of that oh, oh, was, I could, then it was like forget going to sleep I was just sitting there going oh, oh, oh. Uh, I was thinking if I got in the car now could I actually make it drive? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would how long did that interval could you hold the interval for an hour <laughs> Give it free pints. Yeah, but your whole yeah your whole stomach would just collapse. If oh, I was it was that phone call. I can remember the, the first night I like the same tour that me and Rory opened for Jake. So we all, we assumed all comedy started half eight because we'd only ever done clubs. <laughs> so we had we had no idea what time to start it. Theater time. Right. Yeah. So we were in Dungiven and Jake rings me like, "Where fucking are you, papers?" <laughs> I was like, "We're in Dungiven, we're on the way." And he's like, "The show's meant to start five minutes ago." And I like I was driving a wee Hyundai, uh. but by fuck, I floored it. <laughs> And I was that nervous when I got out of the car. So Jack's looking at the window, the playhouse, like fucking. And he, he was, oh, he was all right about it, like, you know, the fucking stalled, or whatever. Yeah. And I was that nervous. I jumped out of the car and just started running <laughs> into the theatre. And he's rapping the window. And I left the door of the car line wide open. Just <laughs> <laughs> like still running. Uh, but there's never, there's never been more. Yeah. My, uh, the stupidity of us not to go, what time does it start, by the way? Yeah. I just, just went half eight, nine, be all right. We had the same problem with Andrew Maxwell, who we were in the festival. And he was obviously doing this in the theatre too. So it was like, 300 people and show starts he's not there I thought okay maybe it's just Maxwell just he'll come in after the act and thankfully there was about four or five comedians <laughs> but it was like you're on next till we fill this gap can you do 10 minutes can you do 10 minutes because he was run apparently got, there was breakdown or something Lego or yeah, something yeah. Like that. but the panic of getting him and he didn't really know Oma he literally, same as you, ditched his car in the middle of the fucking road and just seen me and just give me a hug. And I was like, get into that fucking shit. <laughs> Never worry about hugs, get you in there. And the last day, the fifth comedian had been on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think I was on that. You might have been on and, and filled in as well. And then eventually you came out and I was like, thank fuck for that. But the fear of, all I could think of was, how am I going to deal with these 300 people and tell them he's not here? I introduced somebody on stage once while they were having a shite. <laughs> <laughs> in the opera house. I was, like I'm saying, a gig and... Uh, and uh, they're a big TV person. I won't say who they were because it would be very embarrassing. But uh, they're a big TV, big who, TV person. Who does it ring with? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> see, that's professionalism. Yeah, yeah, you were just going ahead. Yeah, but <laughs> and uh, came genuinely came running on to that. <laughs> and, but and he walked past me. And he went, oh, shit. Is the is the fucking uh, the theatre is probably one of those with the speakers? Is in oh the, yeah, yeah. The the yeah. Opera, opera house, like you know. When you, <laughs> Amazed backstage. Yeah, you would shake where fast yep. after you heard that. Yep. Oh, yeah. The wipe was the problem, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I had to introduce, uh, we had uh, someone booked 
in Queens once and the thing was sold out and with the most we'd ever got in there was like six, seven hundred people I think we had in the room. Fucking hell. It was jammed, right? And uh, they cancelled um, because they got offered a big TV gig so they had to pull it and everyone was there to see them. And then so we got someone who had, we explained the situation and said, look, you're filling in for someone yeah. who's got a TV gig. Everybody's come to see them. You do realise that? And they went, yeah, I'll take it on. And okay. So we sort of announced it, but not too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Coming at, up. Yeah, at the beginning of the show, then I went on and went, hey, and the place went, whoa. And I went, okay. <laughs> and then there's a first act, so I thought it'd be unfair to say it in front of the first act because then they would get it. So I let the first act go on. So everybody's still very excited, thinking that they're going to see who they're there to see, uh, but they're not going to see because they're away in London. Fuck. In oh. Parkinson on the TV. And uh, so, um, yeah, then I went out and went, hi, and then explained to them that what happened. They went, oh, 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 oh. There was this noise around. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> people, <laughs> people looking, mumble, 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 money. And uh, only 12 people asked for their, their, yeah, right. The rest of them went, right, that's fuck our battery very good. And they came on and uh, won them round. Made it. And only 12 people asked for the money. That's back. unreal. Yeah, I know. We going, were. Yeah. yeah, Donald was sitting with the tail open going, right? <laughs> yeah, <just> right. <laughs> <laughs> Give me singles. <laughs> <laughs> and who, who was the replacement act? Do you remember? No. No. Can't remember. I just want to know if people are they good? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. No, I honestly can't remember who it was. <coughs> um, Desperate were names. It was pretty bad when you're a comp, right? After everything written down. I remember. Actually, yours written down every night. Every night. Oh, I remember the still, first. Really? Yeah. I remember the first time doing the gig with you, and uh, doing the warm up, and you at the way. I, first of all, you didn't tell me. Did you go on first? Yep. So I'm sitting there ready for ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome your yeah. warm up back, Connor Keys. <laughs> Colin Murphy and I was like oh fuck's not me <laughs> but I seen you writing your name down yeah, or my yeah. name down yeah, write my own name down but <laughs> <laughs> when, when I seen you writing the name down I thought like you're just announcing me do you have to read it all? but I realised then you're going to be five seven minutes and, and you actually went, and that I said to you I said you had to write my name and you went you wouldn't believe the amount of times it's happened I don't right, McGarry, I, don't I, I didn't just tell McGarry one night we were up in Donegal and I'm standing looking at him and he's waiting to come on. I'm looking straight at him. I'm going, oh, you've you This is only about six years ago. This isn't, you know. I'm going, oh, oh, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Jeez. I'm terrible with that as well. Well, I remember. Then you, then you do the thing if you lean into the mic, there's a gentleman, get the replies going. Uh, the uh, so we go, <laughs> Didn't Jack do that to Michael McIntyre? Oh, no, he did. A man who needs no introduction. You all know him. Michael McIntyre. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it happened to me, <coughs> Jackie was bringing me on at Fest of Funnies, oh, the yeah, Opera House yeah, show, yeah, yeah. and he was doing it, I think he might have been promoting the next night show, there were still tickets available or something, and from the back of his head I was like, he has literally just forgot my name, I could just <laughs> see the back of his head just shaking, and he went, Michael Barnes, and as I walked out somebody went, his name's Mickey. <laughs> It's horrible. I've done it so many times. And if somebody has a name that's hard to pronounce, yeah. forget it. Like, yeah, I, Ramesh, in I introduced Ramesh <laughs> and didn't know when to stop Ranga Nathan. <laughs> I swear to God. <coughs> oh, and he just laughed and laughed. And I was just and it was like, you know, the you know the the what do you call that frog thing? <laughs> Uh, the, the ringtone there. Ling, 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 oh, ling. crazy frog. That's the way I ended Ranganathan. Ranganathan. Something like a boy starting up a motorbike. Ranganathan. That's not so. McCourty got it. Again, hadn't written it down. Hadn't written it down. Hadn't written it down. Uh, even if you did, you did a bit of a ring. You went down my finger. You went big foam ones. Yeah, it was hilarious. Everybody, like, Jane and everybody was booking the gig and he, they were just laughing. He was just going, oh, that, he said, people fucked that up, but that's probably one of the best. <laughs> <laughs> it's the but it was all it. right. It just went on <laughs> longer than it should have. When you have to add syllables, oh, that's usually a bad sign. Yeah. Really, really embarrassing. Oh. <laughs> uh, so, yes, uh, right. So that's also uh, tour sorted. Uh, Mickey's fighting. Yep. and uh, I'm on tour. That's right. Mickey's on tour. So when do you go on tour? I don't know. <laughs> he's so good. He's February. so good at this. February. Yes. The week after the boxing. Okay. God spurs him. I've got uh, But it's... You may uh, be in jail. The Spurs store hasn't slaughter. sold out. Castle Dirk hasn't sold out. Okay. What's going on, Derek? Not yeah, sure what the rest of them. Uh, oh, wait, that's another one. We're doing Bally Castle. Are you doing Bally Castle? No. I don't... Bally, was the Marine Hotel. Yeah, that that's has, a great, great gig. 
well, tell people to Valley Castle to buy tickets. <laughs> <laughs> They're very strange. I found that because I, I did it once. It wasn't even a tour show. It was, I'd supported Tommy Tiernan and they asked me to go back and do it and it, right up until the minute I was going on stage oh, so and then a whole lot of them turn up. Yeah, right. Um, so you'd be grand. It's like a bus turns up outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Ballet Castle, if you're listening, yeah. get your tickets out. It's, uh, yeah, there were boys, uh, was it in Derry? They were doing, um, BBC were doing a new act competition mm-hmm. and they had the, the Northern Iron Heat and this guy, I was to MC it, but off stage, you know, I wasn't on the um, TV show. So mm-hmm. I was just there to keep things rattling along and introduce the act. And this English producer says, uh, Hi Colin, uh, we'll, we'll like you there at uh, seven o'clock. Uh, we're hoping to turn over at eight. And I said, what? And he said, uh, eight o'clock. I said, and Derry? <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, the show starts at eight, it publicizes at eight. And I went, yeah, but it's in the comedy club in Derry in the Delacroix? Yeah, he said, yeah, yeah. And I said, nobody turns up till 10. <laughs> And he said, no, but it's advertised every week at nine. I said, yeah, but still, nobody turns up till 10. Aye. <laughs> and and uh, he says, well, you know, that's happening. So just be there. So I, I turned up. The place is deserted. Car park's empty. <laughs> Half the staff aren't even there. <laughs> it's just, you know, the, the woman's still buff on the floor. Blah, 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 blah. It's that kind of. And he's sitting there, the crew are sitting there reading the paper, everything. He's shouting himself. Uh, two of the acts hadn't turned up. Oh. Uh, one of them, uh, Bernard O'Shea, turns up pissed. Because oh. uh, he went for a walk, got lost, and got drunk, and then turned up. He fell off the stage during the, the show. Um, it sounds like your soulmate. And, <laughs> oh, it was brilliant. It and sounds then, like something I've done. Right up, right up until eight o'clock. Nothing. Nobody there at eight o'clock. Then nobody there at half eight. Then at nine o'clock, it was like a bus went, doo, 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 <laughs> and the doors fucking... burst open. The place was full. <laughs> your man's Unreal. The sweats fucking piled. <laughs> Nuri is like that. Or whenever. Um... Was the Riff Raff Rooms used to be a place in the Oh, Uri. yeah, yeah, yeah. And every every week we did it, yeah. you'd be there at 8 o'clock, yeah. going 10 o'clock, well, it'll start. And they would turn up steaming drunk. Yeah, yeah. rough they, they would, yeah, 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 they would like they would pub crawl their way through the place yeah. to the point where I remember once doing the same bit of material twice and nobody noticed. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to see. Like, these people haven't listened to that fucking thing we've said. Like, they would, they would laugh when you got to the, the sort of ta-da moment yeah, of the yeah, yeah. and they go, ha, 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 but weren't paying attention to anything. <laughs> Sounds like your Cookstown gig. Oh, fuck that one too, yeah. That was the worst thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> but the, but well, that was the day after the waterfront so fucking hall. Day after the waterfront. Because yeah. I'm a greedy bastard. Come. So like, it's the biggest gig I've ever done. The gig of a lifetime. Yeah. Do you know I mean? Waterfront hall. Yeah. Sold out. Fucking everything went perfectly. Standing ovation. The full shebang. Yeah. And the next night I was doing a gig in Cookstown and I walked out on stage and nobody looked up. <laughs> The fact that we're looking down is kind of worrying. <laughs> just, yeah, they just fucking they just kept chatting to each other, and I'm just standing in the corner, fucking. I just wanted to grab. That's a bit of a character. I just wanted to grab him by the fucking head and just give me your calendar so I can look at your calendar. <laughs> Do not put in Cookstown the day after the fucking waterfront. The only all. calendar I have is Kelly Brook 2014. So there's no, there's no point in that was shocking. That was, wow. that was one of those. It's been a long time since I've had a. I died so bad I couldn't sleep. Right. Oh yeah. You just land wide away. What the fuck was that? Two hundred pound cash and how are we gonna do? <laughs> Any excuse you're driving that to all in the morning, all in the morning, but take every gig, get to while it's coming. Make hair with the sunshine. That's my dad's favourite one. Is it? Oh, just take it while it's there, boys. Take it while it's there. <laughs> Aye, but it's like you know, a fucking G A club in the back, in the back, in the back of nowhere. Take it while it's coming. Take right. it while it's there. The, oh fuck the amount of them. The amount of shit gigs. I I oh, I just this is gonna be. Me being sad in the corner again. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lesser known Orient. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey sad in the corner. <laughs> Telling jokes to no one. <laughs> I remember doing open for Kielty in the in the Odyssey. Mm-hmm. I've told you this a million times too. And uh that was in this Saturday night. And the following Friday, so that was because it was one gig a week. There was there wasn't as much of a scene. Mm-hmm. I was standing in Castle Derg on a table with a carpet over it, wobbling. <laughs> it's like Saddam Hussein's final moments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any students in? <laughs> and that Open was somebody just coming on kicking table. Oh, I swear to God, and that was another one of those ones where like, because I think at the time they were putting the gig on for fellas that were at, it was the glamming season or something. So the farmers would all come into the pub, get fucking hammered. And then go to work for five in the morning. Oh, right, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So you get there at nine and they go, oh, we're not starting at half 11. <laughs> and then, oh, fuck me. I thought you said glamming there. I was like, what the 
fuck are they doing? <laughs> That's what it's, I thought it was. It's, boys it's, in platform I, shoes. Big like stars painted on their face. It's a very woke version of farming. <laughs> Diamantes on the gilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see boys are hanging about with each other too much, slagging me off. <laughs> Stop, sorry, I feel bad now. But that's, that must be a thing too, forever you, like, because what was the scene like when you started stand up here? Was it just the Empire and Queens or was it like... Uh, no, uh, well, no, um, yeah, because there was there was the Empire, and that started in sort of October time, and then I started doing stand up in February, 30 years ago. Jeez. This month. Is it 30 years this month? 30 years this month, I know, it's terrifying. Oh, and Jake started the week before me. <laughs> And uh, so I did Queens and then got booked. So there was that was the first Queens gig, mm-hmm. and then I got booked from that gig uh, to be a compare for used to be a circuit of the front page in Belfast and, and Donegal Street, um, and then you would play a gig in Madden's in Antrim, and a place in Bangor, which I can't remember the name of, and another place up in Derry. So I was doing four nights a week. From the second week of doing stand up, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> unbelievable. Compare, and because then there was another a, circuit that Jake did, and yeah, that was another three. There were two circuits. Yeah, yeah. there were three circuits, and then right. Jackie had a circuit, and then there was so there were three. So there were like twelve or something gigs a week uh-huh. happening. Same money as now. Like, <laughs> uh, I got uh, fifty quid for compare, so I've been paid fifty quid to compare, uh, and I told Jake, and I was going, I ain't gonna pay fifty quid a week. And he just pissed himself laughing. He says, I get 70. <laughs> <laughs> and bastard. that was this, one, of this, one of them was the same gig that I left to do, you know. So anyway, it was, uh, yeah, so there was that. And then that lasted about maybe not even a year. And then I got whittled down to about four gigs. Mm-hmm. And then that was it. So there was only four, <laughs> four gigs. Right enough. Yeah. How long of a gap then? How many years of that has it been that for like them? Because when we, I'm, I'm 10, 11 years now, and like there was the PAV and the Empire, and that was it. Yeah. In Belfast. Yeah. You know, yeah. was there a gap then of yeah, yeah. nothing? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was, uh, yeah. Because even for ourselves in Oma, like the Dailies is new. and Because like, right, the, PAV, the PAV only started a couple of months before I started. So I'm, really? I'm going 15 years in April. Wow. Fucking terrifying. You're still doing that shit gig. And yeah. <laughs> absolutely. You've learned nothing. <laughs> yeah. Still doing the same material. <laughs> Yeah, that's the worst thing about it is you're not the same material, but it's just it's just your scheduling is so fucking awful. I find, just, you know, I find I find a wee notebook uh, a few years ago. Find this, and it was one of my first notebooks. Oh, no and um, I had a Diana joke in it. Yeah, but this right. was like maybe ninety five. I had a Diana joke, and I and I have written after the joke. What too soon? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fuck. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we yeah. yeah. You either got a whacker. And did you uh, do you remember? See if you find an original notebook. Can you remember all the bits? Sometimes, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can sometimes. Yeah, bits of them. Yeah, because I'm still using them. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. You can't throw out the classics, bro. <laughs> and other ones where I put a line through them and going, yeah, good, good decision. And, uh, yeah, and all the stuff that's got like three ticks. And you go, how the fuck did that get three ticks? <laughs> How did that work? Your scoring system was a lot more uh, lenient back then. Well, no, it was usually about the audience. It was the reaction to the audience. And I was right, going, okay. Jesus Christ, it must have been, you know, what were they on? <laughs> yeah. No, it was nuts. Uh, but yeah, it, was much, it wasn't as good. Like, no, there's gigs everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. It's really kicking up. Like, yeah, there's like a, the Moy. The Moy. <laughs> Aye. Uh, couldn't do that one in front of us. I had a corporate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just stopped answering the phone. <laughs> Corbett's in Dungannon. Yeah. Couldn't do it. In a mart, uh, <laughs> Kiwis in uh, Port Rush, quite a good club as I've well. Done that. yeah, so that's nice. actually really, yeah, nice. really good, really, really well done and really well um, set out and all. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, but Derry, it's brilliant that it's all these Yeah, it's great that you could do because like there used to be just one off gigs because there used to be just landlords right, yeah. that decided, oh, I'm quiet on a Tuesday because it's Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I tell you what, there's a room upstairs. I'll tell you what, fuck the room upstairs, we'll do it in the bar. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a Z shaped bar, but it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, put, yep. we'll put the gig in the corner here and then we'll put it in the big screen over there. Most of the people are sitting over there. They'll be on the Grimavik screen. Aye. And you're... That's fucking that sounds like what you have. We're, we're playing yeah. the football, but we're going to put you in front of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did that in, 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 in Hong Kong. The World Cup final. Is oh, fuck. Jesus. <laughs> I'm not joking. And what, did you have to do a gig? We had to do a gig, right, in front of a big screen. And people are arriving in. And so the, the, t- the deal was you buy a ticket, you get comedy, and then the, the cup final. Yes. So you get the World Cup final. And... 
So we start, nobody gives a shit about us. They're just getting in because there was an offer and drink and everything. So the place is rammed, couldn't give a shit. And the whole thing was wind it up, wind it up, wind it up. Like, you would never been on a... Aye. And then people wanted to watch, you know, the build-up and all this sort of yeah. thing on the on the big screen. And there's you going here. Yeah. Did I tell you what? I know. <laughs> there's nothing better, I think. I don't know if it's just the length of time you... I've been doing stand-up now, but if someone goes, can you do 14 instead of 20? I go, fucking yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. The, the laziness. Well, <laughs> well, you, you spend years trying to get 20 minutes, yeah. and then once you get it, you I go, begging for 20. Comedy nah, nah. store on a Saturday night, with, on the late show, when somebody walks in, and the show manager walks in, he says, right, lads, they're all a bit, uh, and we're running a bit late. 15's, 15's okay with everybody. And everybody goes, yep, yep, yep. It's 15, phenomenal. Yep. As long as the money doesn't drop. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Fine, it's yeah. the moment they go, can you do 13? You go, fuck. How can I cut? Yeah, you I have to, you to, have to do mental maths. I just stop mid-sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Light comes up, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> and then at that moment, I said to my, I've gone. <laughs> I'll tell you tomorrow night. Right, come back tomorrow night. You know, somebody went on with an alarm clock once. <laughs> just put the alarm clock. Because they'd gone over when they'd done an open spot somewhere. So they'd, uh, they'd brought an alarm clock on, wound it up, put it down. And they got an old-fashioned tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. And then they were doing the set and they went, dur, 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 just picked it up and walked up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, fuck, that's not a bad that idea. That is deadly, actually. Isn't isn't it? Because the stands still do, and even now in Glasgow, they still play you off with that real. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. if you're doing Red Raw on there and you're meant to do five and you get to five fifteen, yeah. you're just fucking. Reet Petit comes on. Oh, and you, man, I've seen That's so many poor fuckers just. Reet but Reet Petit, so it's really loud and really big, mm-hmm. and then when there's only like. That noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's something. It's like having you know, a massive intro song and there's nobody in the room. It's like having the final countdown as your walk on music. <laughs> and let it run. Let, let's build the atmosphere. And then yeah. the smoke machine's going. Yeah. 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 Woo! I were talking to a guy who had, he genuinely had PTSD from being in Afghanistan and Iraq or something like that. And he was telling us about some of the things. He'd be in a shopping centre and a noise would go off and he would just fucking Come on, yeah. like, freak out. And the amount of Scottish comedians I know who've been in the shopping centre and read the tape players and they go, oh, fuck. I used to do the same with Robbie Williams, let me entertain you, because it was uh, jonglers. jonglers. Used to use it. You'd be backstage going, oh, jeez, the show's starting. And for years. <laughs> yeah. You, I still use that one out. Like, yeah. I, yeah, fucking there must, hell. There must be somewhere, one of the stands must use uh, Stevie Wonder. Um, well, I just called to say I love you. <laughs> is, it, is it an intro? I think it was Sir Duke or one of those, you know, real. Oh, right. oh, yeah. And and the song came on in dailies and Chrissy Boys went, what the fuck are you copying the stand for? And I was like, why was the stand doing? And he was like, that's fucking... Chrissy Boys full of shit. And I was the like, stand have always used Rupert Tate. And that, well, maybe it was somewhere else. That's Chrissy it. in the air. And I just thought, well, I didn't fucking know it's a Stevie Wonder song. I think like, no, they own the fucking... It's on a playlist. Like, I'm not trying to copy some fucking comedy club. It's just a Stevie Wonder song. But I can't remember where it was. It was somewhere that used... Or maybe he got it mixed up with Rupert Tate. I reckon he has, I. He's bound to have. Or John Grisby or some of them. Or, I don't know. I've never known the stand to use anything other than Rupert Tate. No. Yeah. It's a weird song to choose. Yeah, it? yeah it's really weird. That big, <laughs> that's that, yeah, the big blaring brass and all. Yeah. Yes. That's when you hear it five times a night as well. You're like, fucking <laughs> hell. I know, it's a, yeah, in between each act. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. We've brought in it. We have uh, sort of a wee seven-second tune as well, but it's not a famous song. It's just a bit of background music, like, no. just to fill that period. But I always got beat up at the stand in Glasgow on Friday night. On Friday night? What did you do? Me a joke with the Queen, Dan. Good man. From Glasgow, shouldn't have done that. No. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'd yeah. be a bit Forgot. divided. Forgot, Forgot they were worse than us. Yeah. They are. Yeah. I was on stage, I did something one night in Glasgow, and there was a, uh, as the man in the front said, it was a lovely guy I'd been chatting to earlier, he was just a re- newly retired civil servant, don't leave that, see, not very nice. Yes. <laughs> and he says, I used to work in the civil service, Colin, and uh, oh, what did you do? Well, I worked in the unemployment uh, division. And uh, I said, that must have been busy. In Glasgow, <laughs> he says, "You'd be surprised." And uh, he was brilliant. He was a really lovely man, and he was getting loads of laughs as well. I was going, yeah. Anyway, and uh, I said, "What's going on over there?" And you know, the sort of back bit, there's the raised up area over there in the dark on the right. right hand side. And he, uh, I said, "What's that?" And he says, "Oh, I'm very sorry, Colin." He was like a spokesperson for the audience. He was, "I'm very sorry, Colin. There seems to be a kerfuffle." <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Oh, just say that again." He went, a kerfuffle. <laughs> And uh, it sounds like somewhere in Scotland, doesn't yeah. it? Where are you from? I'm from Kerfuffle. <laughs> East Kerfuffle. Do you know it? <laughs> and uh, Kerfuffle Police. <laughs> and Police. And uh, he says, there's a Kerfuffle. I said, oh, right, well, what's that about? And he said, I, I believe it's uh, sectarianism. <laughs> and I went, really? And he says, oh, it's uncalled for. <laughs> it's just brilliant. It's uncalled for. Fenian bastard. And, uh, he turned, and he says, it's all right, it seems to have been sorted. And I went, what do you mean sorted? And he went, never do you mind. <laughs> 
Uh, apparently, the, the audience had sort of done it themselves, yeah. Okay. Some guys mm. shouted something uh, at me. And uh, right. yeah, yeah. And the crowd went, No, I'm not. There's no. a surprising number of people from here at it, uh, <laughs> yeah. which he didn't expect. Yes. Well, uh, Glasgow was. City Centre on Saturday afternoon. Me and Robbie McShane went for, went for some lunch. Mm-hmm. And at the is it St. Enoch Square. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so there's a trans pride oh, yeah. parade, uh, sort of early in the afternoon. So it was all people with fucking big glittery eyelashes and costumes and capes and fucking great loud music. It was really yeah. good fun. And then an hour after that, there was an anti-vax march, and I watched the <laughs> shift change. <laughs> That's a Venn diagram. There. <laughs> there's, nobody, there's, nobody, there's nobody there right literally. I was going, I'm hanging on here for the anti-vax. There was one guy dressed as, as a giant car- <laughs> one guy dressed as a giant cartoon baby, saying, do not, whatever, like, my body, my choice. And I was going, I don't know which one you're here for. Yeah. <laughs> he's there for the abortion act. Yeah. But it's, it's the wrong week. He can't see through the mask. Turned, but he can't back down. And he's going, he was on the bus on the way in. He's sitting on the bus. Where are you going? I'm going to call Fuffle. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> it's, oh. It was hysterical. And so we still, so uh, he obviously didn't get any. I just kept doing laps. Proper, to see what was happening. No, but you didn't get any proper danger then on Friday night. You didn't get really no the violence. But, uh, was it after after the it, gig? It was after the on gig? the way out. Oh right. So when you walk through that wee courtyard and there's a wee the wee gate you have yeah, to go yeah. through. Mm-hmm. So there was a guy who was like, I could, you could, it felt like he was waiting around. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So he was there with his mates. He was sort of hanging around, and uh, mm-hmm. as we're walking out, he's going, "Can I see your phones, lads?" Because obviously, he must have tried to take a photo or a video or something. But that was the excuse he was using. Can I see your phone? Yeah. So he was trying to. Gets to take her phone to the report. I don't know what the fuck was going on, but you could he just was, tell. He was, this, try, he was telling you to take your phone. Yeah, yeah. He was fucked, right? right but okay. I, I was just going. I know you're with that crowd of guys who went. I no fucking funny uh, when yeah. I called the Queen of Peter Piper taking bitch. And then, <laughs> I mean, it wasn't really a joke. I mean, it wasn't very funny. <laughs> just a statement. It's just a statement. Right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, it was it was weird to just go. It's, it's probably the first time in maybe ten years where I've been right? almost having a fuck kick then after a show. Hmm. It's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Showbiz. Lockdown's over. We're back to normal. Yeah, You're on a bit of a midlife crisis, aren't you? Just Think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was all you, mate. These are lethal. <laughs> <laughs> you want to back a fuck up? If you, 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 you come any closer than thirty <laughs> centimeters to me, I can. <laughs> you're dead. As soon as I can smell your breath, you're fucking dead. <laughs> Why I oughta? <laughs> Fight you with two hands tied behind my front. <laughs> was the one? Oh, who was it? Was talking about that joke? Or somebody had uh, advertising on the soles of their. Oh, that's right. Yeah, for when they were. What's that? Uh, when they were boxing. Was it a boxer for, for the for they were being was knocked it? out. It was, but it was a was it not a charity match or something? I don't and know. they put something on the soles of the feet so when they were knocked out, you could read the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was Bruno or somebody. But somebody they sell did sell it. Was somebody really it was, big yeah. sold. Uh, because they were told that no, you're you're it gonna. Might be Bruno and Tyson I think it was something like that. Yeah. And the, uh, the, they were whoever he was fighting was a dead cert. Everybody was on their side, saying you're no way you're going to yeah. beat him. And he said, "I tell you what, I'm so confident. I'm going to sell the soles of my shoes, <laughs> on my boots. That's what the advertising there is going to be. Whatever, a million quid or five hundred grand." And uh, so somebody took it. Yeah, you'd get a jambon or something for your. Well, you could get your feet. The turkeys. Yeah, Castle Dirt. I'll just get the Sarasas cream name. <laughs> Thank you, steroid cream. <laughs> <laughs> you you can cover yourself, you'd be slippy, like, you can get a hold of you. I think if I move fast enough, I think there'd be enough of me still there. Oh, I'll yeah, be yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just be fighting a flecky <laughs> shadow. <laughs> <laughs> he punches me, he'll blind himself. Like, what's that? <laughs> like, go through an asteroid field? <laughs> There's snow in here? What the fuck? <laughs> it's an affliction, fellas, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a badge? Not yet, no. no. you see, you, yeah. well, you can't, can't get a badge. It doesn't count. That means you can take Somebody piss. was trying to convince me to get a badge for it, and I, that's typical Lurgan. You can get this belly fat line. Parking space for that. Right. Oh, yeah. Closer to Tesco. Couldn't drive anyway. <laughs> Fucking hands are killing me. <laughs> Even with your driving gloves? Even with the driving gloves? <laughs> you never seen the driving gloves in action, have you? Oh, I, saw, I saw them on this. Oh, right, okay. You were yeah, yeah. once, and I thought, what's he, do? Aaron Neville? Is he a big Aaron Neville fan? What's... <laughs> It got, it got all sore and flames, so I had to wear driving gloves to drive. Oh, that was a very re- niche fucking... Oh, it is a very niche, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea who the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. He's a black singer from years ago, but uh, what a voice. Like, but yeah, I haven't but he heard about Aaron Neville in a long time. He used, had, to, he used to wear fingerless ones of those. <laughs> See, I, want, I wanted to wear a ring on the outside of him. <laughs> have you ever heard Aaron Neville go and listen to this? Well, that's a fucking uncanny impersonation there. <laughs> what was this big song? It was a big song. Oh, he had a massive um, too. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's going to annoy me. Funny with Google. Up. Yeah. Funny with some way. Funny with some way. Figuring that out. People have arguments. No, I'm telling you, it was in 1942. It was not in 1942. It was 1972. If there's only there's a way to sort this argument out. <laughs> hey Siri. <laughs> Aaron Neville was... Uh, Tell it like it is, no? No, 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 no. 1980s, there was a big... Uh, I, always, oh, oh, I, I, know the, I know the song. Leather, you should go for that look. Aye. It's a leather waistcoat. <laughs> It'd be might. topless with a leather waistcoat. <laughs> and uh, yes. leather, those driver's gloves, fingerless. Yeah, we have to get a... And a, a headband. <laughs> yeah. Are we talking Bennett from Commando? Red headband. Sort of vibes? That sort of, yeah. Absolutely what I'm going for. The black. Yeah. Right. <laughs> My barber this morning goes, uh, listen, if you want to get your hair cut before the fight... I've got a great idea. What? He goes, I think you look kind of like him, so it'll work. And he showed me a photo of Michael B. Jordan, who's a black guy from, from the new Rocky film. I, like, I look like him, do I? I look like that muscular black man, me. Old Scammy McGinger. Bit him. With an afro. Aye, and he's got a full head of hair to him, yeah. bald as fuck. <laughs> oh, you're not. Oh, you're right. Oh, that's going to annoy me now. With that's, that song, uh, Aaron Neville was... <laughs> <laughs> it's... <laughs> You have to, you have to listen to that. He, sa- he sang uh, the national anthem no at, at, at American national anthem at, what, at the Super Bowl or something one year. Yeah. Oh, even when you do that, I can hear the song. <laughs> a fucking bastard! I, know I don't even know who it is. I'm just loving that. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> I need you need to hear this. Just this, it's it's just you have to hear stick his, his voice on. Just I wonder to, if I can get his voice even just because of the oh, Aaron Neville's soulful Christmas. Yeah, we fucking good. Spotify. <laughs> just let me see. Uh, it? Oh, it's just trying. Get it, to find, okay, you find the Christmas song. Uh-huh. I'll do it, and then we'll play it and see how close I'm going to be to. Um, oh, holy night. Oh, holy night. Oh, hey, oh. Of course, there's going to be a long intro to it. Like. Yeah. <laughs> That's bang on. Bang on. Like. <laughs> Can't do many impersonations. That's one. The other one is uh, Alec Guinness uh, from um, Dr. Zhivago. Uh, <laughs> does she play? No. Ah, oh, well, it's a gift. That's not bad. Yeah. These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> I've, I, I yeah. figured the other day, I think I can do a good Chris Hemsworth, which isn't. That big a deal because nobody right. gives a fuck. Yeah. He's like, oh, I am Chris Hemsworth. I, I, I was in Thor, so yeah. <laughs> Everything he says. Because I was watching that. Is it Limitless? He's in a show where he in, uh, on Discovery where he puts his body through all this fucking oh, right, crazy right. stuff, and the whole way through he's just going, yeah. So you know, I'm pretty fit. Yeah. So yeah, Thor. <laughs> well, it's the Kenny Reeves. Kenny Reeves. Every single film he does, he has to go. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> every single one. Yeah. Romeo, he does it in Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. It was only the other night. And I was like, whoa, what light from yonder window breaks? <laughs> even, even in Dracula? Dude, <laughs> that guy's got some rad teeth, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Whoa, whoa. Mm. He, did, he did some, yeah, it was some action film he was in that he was Mr. Serious Guy and he went, whoa. Oh, so he has everything? Yeah. Even in John Wick. In John Wick, you can tell they've gone, let's not give him any fucking dialogue. Yeah, let's try just shoot and fight look, yeah. people. I've never seen a John Wick film. They're all right. The title's put me off. Uh, it's yeah. not good to call it Wick. <laughs> I, for a long time, I got John Wick and Joe Wick. The, <laughs> the, <laughs> the fucking YouTube PT mix. Hey, what? You do it very well. Hey, jump up and down. <laughs> like, fuck me. This is gonna, I'm going to get fit watching this. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to go, yeah, put a girl down and shoot your fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs> I've done with two tins of beans. <laughs> I can do this wrong. <laughs> open. <laughs> Both of them opened. <laughs> uh, uh, It'll be later uh, when I'm finished. <laughs> It'll be later when I'm finished. <laughs> do the ones with sausages there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> right, are we going to uh, move on to our questions then? Uh, it's fair through it. So we asked our patrons, Colin, to give us questions and they, uh, right. they sent us in uh, a heap of them, as we would say here in Fantona. Wild pile. A wild pile. Um, I always so thought that... Uh, um, Oh, there's a letter up in, in the toilets and the, my agents. It was handwritten that <laughs> went to one of the acts that they look after. And uh, it came from Donegal. And you know the way it says, like, first class or, or air mail or whatever? Uh, on the top corner, they've written. So they've got a stamp. And then on the top corner, they've handwritten, Wild Fierce Urgent. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a class of that mail. Absolutely yeah, should be. Yeah. Wild yeah, yeah. Fierce Urgent. <laughs> It's 7.85 if you want to wait for your surgeon. Test results. 
smile face here open it while handling <laughs> on stage on <laughs> stage, <laughs> stage, stage night, four while handling <laughs> stage four while handling <laughs> dead for Christmas <laughs> while face urgent sure there's no rush the second class <laughs> and and uh, I, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> do really <clears throat> right okay so, uh, good evening, gents, even though it's morning, by the way. Colin, where is somewhere you would like to go and somewhere you can't ever get sick of gigging at? Connor and Mickey, same question. Also, what's Colin's chair-related nickname? Thanks, lads, keep it going. What? So we always give, a, a, anybody that had a guess, we give them a, a name. Chair-related? Chair. So we had Busted Sofa, which was Arm McCann. Okay. We had Armchair, yeah. which was Mark McCann. I mean, I don't know, you're more of a chaise lounge kind of guy, are you? Right? Don't like a chaise lounge. No? No. Don't like a chaise lounge. Don't like a Chesterfield. Uh, I don't like fresh cream myself. See that? This what I have to do every fucking week. Uh, 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 so yes, for a well, chair related well, nickname, we, we will have to come up with that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but where is somewhere you would like to go and somewhere you can't ever get sick of gigging at? Somewhere I'd like to go just to go to. Uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, where would I like to go? Iceland. I've always wanted to go to Iceland. Okay. I like the cold. I want to go to Iceland. I want to see mm-hmm. geezers. I want to see steam going out of the ground, boys. Oh, aye. Yeah, I want to see that. I think the Oma, Oma one does have that. Sorry, excuse me? <laughs> Oma steam going out of the ground. The, the Oma, Oma Iceland. Iceland has All right. A <laughs> couple of geezers out there. Right <laughs> They're not allowed to call the man anymore. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> right, Iceland and um, and uh, where somewhere you can't ever get sick of gigging at uh, oh you can get sick of gigging everywhere yeah that's what I would have thought too it's work <laughs> yeah it's a job <laughs> yeah um, same question for us um, somewhere you'd like to go Mick I don't know why I always, I always feel like the Bahamas is somewhere I want to go just to see just mm. to see but I don't really want to, I don't really give a fuck Fair what around. is the Bahamas Tell us somewhere about the, something about the Bahamas that you've always wanted to go to. It was in Jaws 4. <laughs> and I thought to myself, do you know what? That looks lovely. <laughs> that was the plot of the film. That's why, yeah, they, yeah. That's why the that's shark wanted to work. Yeah, yeah. It looks lovely. A fella who works with me is on cruise at the moment in, and he just sent me a, a, in Bahamas and he sent me a picture last week and it looks fucking amazing. Oh. And I was like, it's fucking January and he's sitting with a fucking cocktail. And he's not going to send you the picture where it looks shite. No, that's true. Yeah. The other side of the boat yeah. where all the shit's being pumped out. <laughs> <laughs> All the dead people. Yeah. yeah. Is it a bit of a nightmare, Bahamas? I don't know. Never been. I find it. <laughs> My wife used to live in Barbados. She lived oh, yeah, when she was a teenager. She says, it sounds brilliant, but if you're a white Irish teenager, you don't really want to be in Barbados where everybody's walking around on the beach in, in bikinis and things and you're pasty white. Yeah. And just spontaneously combust. <laughs> hey, <laughs> and you're just permanently the colour of this sofa. That's <laughs> going, ah, oh, jeez. That's the problem I, I have. Another beach party. <laughs> I, I love going to hot countries and can't go outside. I have to just go oh, through the shadows. Yeah, you know, out out yeah. I, did that, I, I did that in, in uh, California, running shadows it was like 40 degrees or something oh fuck yeah and you know oh, oh, then we run to that shadow over there run it with. I we were where the fuck are we it was somewhere in New South Wales Australia con, con, just around. and uh, but it was during the bushfires and I was trying to have a smoke <laughs> during a bushfire <laughs> at 42 degree heat like in, I make I'm light. not doing life right am I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow <laughs> uh, right um uh, so yeah, for, uh, what would you? Think, you? Uh, I, I only really have one place left I want to go to is New or, Orleans. I, I've not, oh really? Yeah, I've nowhere else really. Everything else, I'm no interest in. Um, right, would Colin love to get a swipe at Jake O'Kane if they were to do the comedy boxing, or what comedian would he love to box either for comedic reasons or somebody he just wants to slap? Jake would kill me. All oh, right. Yeah, Jake would be a scrapper. I'd Jake say. used to box. Mm. Well, he actually well, yeah, yeah, and he he says he wasn't good at it, and he used to do weights and stuff, and now he can't. Do and then his back injuries, where he can't right. do it. So, so maybe him. <laughs> <laughs> he's got Seventy a, pound, you fucking. <laughs> he's got a blue badge. Uh, so yeah, um, but no, he'd kill me. Um, no, I, I don't think I, I wouldn't be good at the boxing. No, I don't. No, I wouldn't be good at it. Okay. Uh, Colin, has there ever has there been any gig that you will always remember, and why? <laughs> <laughs> where do we start? <laughs> wow. 
Do you remember the bad ones more than the good ones? Oh, Christ, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm normal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never ever trust a comedian goes, yeah, I got this uh, third stunt innovation. Uh, <laughs> no. You don't oh, yeah, remember those. Bit, you remember, you remember, it doesn't matter how well the gig's going, you, there's one fucker not yeah. laughing. That's the person you fixate on the whole yeah. day. And the whole you night the afterwards. Guy, and then you look and you go, I'm going to make yeah. you laugh. And then even when you're on the way home, go, why yeah. did they not? Uh, what was yeah. wrong? When I do the <laughs> Emperor, I, the I can't opera. look at that table on the right oh, you, yeah. as you're on the stage because of one night oh, eight <laughs> years ago where three people just fucking hated me. And even now, I'm like, I can't even look at that. Do you remember the night Jake or Jackie interrupted my set? No. So uh, you were on, you were yeah. emceeing. Mm -hmm. There was a real fucking kerfuffle. On the balcony, right. there was a table of like 30 or 40, and yeah. it turned out, after you talked to them and all the rest, and tried to get them quiet, that there was a retirement party or some shit. Yeah. So they, they didn't even care. That they just right. thought this was a venue. They didn't care there was yeah. comedy on. And then you brought me on, Yeah. and I got about two and a, two and a half minutes in, and I could, I knew I had these people, but I could also see them looking behind them, yeah. being distracted by it. And then the next thing I turned to my left, and Jackie's at the side of the stage going, like, give me the mic. And I was like, oh, I do remember this. And I had to pass the mic down to him. And then, because, you know, the height of the stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm passing the mic down to him, and I'm standing <laughs> naked, <laughs> naked, in front of 350 people just going, hmm, while he's tearing them out for fucking. And, and then he hands the mic. And I'm like, I, I said, I think I said, thank you, Dad, or whatever. At the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got back in, and the whole way through the set, I'm going, that's me, I'm done. I'm never getting back here again. I'm finished. And you came on to, yeah. to go back, and as I walked off stage, my foot caught the wire of the microphone stand <laughs> and brought the mic stand down with it. And I was like, that's it. I'm fucking finished. And I, before I got down them the last three steps, Jackie was at the bottom of the stage. And he went, I'm so sorry. And as soon as I heard those words, I went, thank fuck. <laughs> I thought that's me. I'm never getting out of here again. <laughs> Tore the mic stand the whole lot down. I was like, oh, fuck, get I, me out of here. I, oh. In Australia, I, there was a guy who was on tour with us that had merch to sell. So he'd, he sold these wee air fresheners yeah. of himself. It's a good idea for yeah, stuff to sell. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but he was on first before the break, or <laughs> last before the break. No, I last before, he was closing the first half of the show. Mm -hmm. And he's like, listen, I forgot to mention my merch. So at the end of the show, can I come back up and mention the merch? And I was like, well, that's a stupid idea. I'll just mention it. Okay. You, you go get ready to sell it. At the end of the gig, I'll just say, yeah, yeah. he's got merch to sell. So at the end of the show, I'm like, oh, by the way, uh, Sonja says merch to sell. And I'm like, what, what do you got? Like pointed at him to go. And he came up on the stage <sighs> and did the, the speech he would normally do at the end of his set. Uh, an hour and a half later so nobody gave a fuck yeah. and I, I was just standing there going, I, I'm like I know how long this lasts it's about a three to four minute and you have to stand uh, there I'm, I, I started to walk off and then I went I can't walk off because what if he's smart enough to know and not do the whole speech so I walked back and then I realised he's not fucking smart enough to do the whole speech <laughs> he's in the whole fucking speech so I was just behind him just walking back and forward <laughs> yeah, yeah, <just laughs> uh, I, that, that time something weird, that felt like 15 minutes even though I knew he spoke for 30 yeah, seconds oh, but it felt all. and the whole room is just you know what I mean you're standing well, I, did, I was doing a, a corporate thing once and uh, it I thought it was going well <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, I turned I, I did something and I don't know what it was but then I turned around and I went to pick up my, I don't know how this happened either. And I turned around to pick up my drink of water, a glass of water, and on the beer mat, underneath the glass of water, this was proper fucking Darren Brown shit. And I picked up the thing and written on the beer mat, the torn, the, you know, the label off the beer mat and written on the beer mat, uh, get off. The promoter <laughs> had, had done this. <laughs> oh, Somehow he got behind me on the stage, done this. While you were, while I was on. And I hadn't even seen, he was like you didn't proper. Even see him? Yeah, Holy unless he fuck. had it prepared and it was there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the minute I went on. But yeah, I'd done Holy something to upset people. And I had to be rushed out, literally rushed out the back and put into a car through the kitchen. Can you remember what it was that you had done? That yeah, but we're not talking about it now. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to trigger you or, or, or who the gig was for, but uh, <laughs> they regularly patrolled past our house. And um, uh, but I arrived home and I was looking at the curtains. <laughs> yes. And my wife's in bed. She says, how'd the gig go? And I went, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, Jesus, I'm still getting, that's, right. a, that's a still in the middle of the night. They go. Oh, oh. I still. This is sorry. I'll just do this quick. I don't know if you were there the night. There's a comedian. Well, not mention his name. Uh, but I'll just. I'll, oh fucking hey! Oh fucking that guy. Uh, yeah. And he was doing an open spot in the Empire. He was terrible. Right. Absolutely fucking terrible. He was doing an open spot in the Empire one night, and I think every comedian from Northern Ireland went down to go. This is going to be brilliant. He's going to fuck it. And he flicked it and fucking crushed it. Really? And I still wake up thinking about that. Because there's about 12 of us going, 
<laughs> and then he started and got a laugh. And we all went, what the fuck? <laughs> and then by the end of it, we're all just standing against the wall. Like, <laughs> like ripping. He got, he, got his, he got booked for his first 20 straight after it. Holy fuck. Oh, aye. right. Uh, Colin, you're wiki. There you are, you're wiki. Your wiki said you did work with Plan Ireland, so thank you for that. Yes. From other comedians, I've only heard that you're dead on. So yeah. yeah. Have you come across someone you've worked with that was surprisingly down to earth? I assume doesn't obviously count, yeah doesn't count yeah. us too yeah yeah. Uh, yeah has anybody worked with it was surprisingly is maybe uh, what didn't reach yeah that's a surprise exceeded the expectations no um uh <laughs> see you doing this too long <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I, I knew them where did I start there weren't anybody <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing <laughs> uh, no they well, are in fairness in thirty years you're saying thirty years this month so yeah. you. You would have been around with all the guys who are... The yeah, team. all the guys that are really famous and rich and on the TV. Yeah, those yeah. guys, yeah. <laughs> I'm a fitting them. <laughs> yeah, go on. You point the in. Yeah, that's, all, that's, all right. that's fine. That's all we want to know. Uh, right, even lads. Uh, every time my idiot friend gets a few beers in them, the same argument arises that three of them together could beat a UFC fighter. Can you both please put this silliness to bed once and for all? P.S. Hope Mark McCarney's family have the chicken goujons ready for his funeral. Well, I know for a fact uh, one of them could be the UFC fighter in uh, some sort of quiz. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or yeah the, never the, never yeah. said what the challenge was. Yeah. Oh, 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 I did. I did. Oh, I mean, and Kilkenny. Um, two Kilkenny school. Uh, before the pandemic, I did uh, a gig there. Was on. I was talking about UFC because I don't, you know, and your man, what do you call him? Uh, McGregor? McGregor? Yes. And I was well ahead of the curve in this one. Oh, yeah. And thought he was a ball bag, right? <laughs> Just always hated him. I didn't like his arrogance. I hated his arrogance. And he, pl he plays the whole Irish card and the arrogance. Yeah. And you're going, these two things don't, that, that's not a Venn diagram that overlaps. You know yeah, I mean? the, the arrogance yeah. and Irishness. No, 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 you don't know. No, no, no. like Seamus Heaney. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, Seamus Heaney yeah, yeah. won the Nobel Prize <laughs> and his acceptance speech was, ah, sure, you know yourself. <laughs> and that, you know, that's the level. <laughs> there isn't, that doesn't happen. So I used to have a go at him because of that arrogance and that sort of, and he'd walk on. Like this. And, everybody, and that, that walk even went yeah. viral. And you're looking at it going, all that's missing is a mitten on a string there and a mitten on a string there. <laughs> so I was doing all this stuff. That, and it was I would normally storm. I, I was doing all this stuff and it was going well, but people were doing this every so Like on this side of the room, we're all looking over here. And I'm going, what the fuck? And then I suddenly went, shit, he's not here. <laughs> so, and I looked over and uh, there was a guy there. And uh, so I thought, right, this is something to do with. So I said, what, what do you do? And he says, oh, oh I, uh, I own a gym. And I says, oh, oh right, like a gym bunny kind of gym. And he went, no, 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 no. I said, what sort of gym? He says, well, actually, I'm um, Conor McGregor's coach. Kavanagh? Yeah. Oh, so Kavanagh's fuck. sitting there. What's right, the chances with of his that? wife? And I went, my mouth went dry immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, okay. And then, uh, and then he, he had his phone out and I said, what are you, what are you doing? My voice went up here. <laughs> I said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I just, I just uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I said, don't fucking Don't ring him. Me. Don't <laughs> ring him. <laughs> And uh, it's, and then there was a do I, honest to God, this is true. There was a dog started barking, like chasing the car outside the venue. And I said, "That's probably him chasing the car up the road." <laughs> he said, He's not the smartest man in the world, is he? And he went. <laughs> but yeah, so I had. You can make like ignorance a blacked out Range Rover out there. Like, and he oh, was really him. dead on. Oh, no. He was really sound, and he, he played seems along to be with it. In interviews, he yeah. does all right. Seems he played good, along yeah. with it, and he was just brilliant. Hey. Is that uh, where he's from? No, or no, he's, 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 from from he's from Dublin. I thought no, he was. He, was he, he just uh, he was at the gig. He was down in Kilkenny for the weekend. Don't right. cut laughs. Chances of that. Like I know. Oh, <coughs> so right. yeah, you could. Uh, My mouth's going dry yeah. thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> it was one of those moments your days go whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, and all I could think was, all of this was going through my head. You know, remember the Jim Jeffries thing where he got punched on the stage? It wasn't long after that. Oh fuck on, yeah! On, in the store, in the comedy yeah. store in Manchester, and someone punter came on and chinned him, and he went down, and he went, not the face. <laughs> and then that's what he said <laughs> when he went down. That's, that's, in a split <coughs> second, that's when it went through my head. And I thought, oh, this could be great on YouTube. <laughs> Hope somebody's very honest. If he is here, but I might not live. <laughs> just... In memoriam. Yeah. yeah right. Next show is you come out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love UFC fighters. <laughs> uh, right. On the name of the tour is Walkie Talkie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's up there with Spooky Blinder. Like That's that phenomenal. <laughs> right. 
Uh, on the local scene, which comedian do the three of you think is least like their on-stage persona when they're off duty? Who would you say is most similar to their on-stage persona? And spoiler alert, it's Mickey. <laughs> uh, it's not a job, know, it's a vocation. When you were started that sentence, which uh, comedian is least like, and I was going, likely to to succeed? <laughs> is it, I don't think that's yeah. I've loads of them. Aggressive. So who's least like their on-stage persona when they're off duty? So I suppose that's probably who's the quietest off stage as opposed to being... I would, nobody really has a, a huge character difference, do they? Between... Not really, I don't think. No, it's just a sort of bigger version. Yeah, yeah it's more exaggerated are. maybe, but it's, yeah. Uh, oh, Paul Curry maybe? <laughs> oh, McAleer. McAleer's a nightmare. Yeah. See off stage. Oh, the yakking and the talking. The rave music. It's just, it's, he has yeah, this, yeah. he plays the rave before he goes on. He's fucking... Mm, 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 the mm, amount mm. of coke he takes. Oh, really? <laughs> cans of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's what has him wired. <laughs> Big cream buns. Oh, nice. Was it you that told the story of Kevin Magalier and Michael Redmond? Michael Redmond in the same fucking I green room. I in Glasgow. I was in the we dressing room with the. Mm. Two, I was doing a show with him, and uh, it was the quietest dressing room I've ever been in my life. <laughs> It's the most. They're, they're completely comfortable in their own company, and I've known both of them individually for years. But it's the first time I've ever been in a room with both of them and no one else, just the three of us. And they were just total silence, pint of Guinness each. And uh, Michael just went, uh huh. And uh, <laughs> Kevin just went, oh, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and I was looking for cameras going, this is. It was phenomenal. It was brilliant. I did a, a car journey with Michael, me and him in the back of a car to Kinlock Burby, which is near Kefuffle. Yeah. In the Highlands of Scotland. <laughs> and every so often, just, you know, you're just thinking, oh, well, just, I should say something. Say something yeah. And I would go, <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Just, Four it. hours yeah. in my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> so, Father Stone and uh, Uncle Colin. Uncle Kevin. <laughs> would be, you know, that's. that's yeah. It's, uh, I don't get us, I think. Because, you know, I've only met Ke- uh, Colin f- like a handful of times uh, off stage, and uh, I find him quite different to what he is on stage. Yeah, he definitely Yeah, he's probably. Quite quiet and and very quite softer and yeah. quieter, yeah, off yeah. stage, yeah. He's not the, the bigger character that he is mm. when he's on stage. Because he's fucking counting money in his head the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he can afford to be quiet. <laughs> uh, right. Oh, oh, Well, lads, do you think the Clintons in their old age have had a brain fart and disappeared to wrong Julian? That's definitely for just rabbit. Uh, yeah, I don't even get that one. Uh, right. Well, lads, Mickey mentioned recently he'd still like to do a commando episode of Best of the Best. That was the other one to do. Right. Uh, if Colin was invited to do an episode, what would he pick? I already know the answer to that because I've asked you this before. What was that? What would you pick as your Best of the Best, either TV, movie, or <gasps> oh. uh, album? So Yeah. It was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. Yeah. That was going to be your selection. Yeah. Which oh, is a fucking, fucking, yeah. I'd only watched it uh, a couple of weeks ago when it was on Sky and I ended up watching the yeah. whole thing. I, that's what I do. Every time it's on, I go, oh, it's first. Uh, and then next thing I, <laughs> it's three in the morning. Have, have you, you forget? Seen... You forget about oh, High Fidelity's the other one that saw it the other night. Oh, High Fidelity's fucking, fucking brilliant. brilliant. I love the book. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but I thought they... Oh, my my uh, best friend's uh, wife, uh, uh, Vic, she worked on it. She was, uh, was one of our first gigs. She's a sound editor. Oh, wow. And... Uh, I used to stay with them when I was doing gigs in London and she arrived home one day and said, oh, you two are going to love the film. And we said, what do you mean? She says, just trust me, you're going to love the film. There's a bit in it that you two are going to love. Me and Colin have been so for years, like, about ten, seven, eight years old. And, uh, and he went to the cast and crew screening and then he texted me and he says, you're going to love it. So I went to see the film going, what the fuck, what the fuck? What am I going to love? Sitting in the film in Belfast watching it and it's the scene where he says uh, t- he's trying to impress you, uh, the your girl about Green Day and mm-hmm. he says the nerdy guy the, the bald yeah, guy yeah. and he says uh, he says Green Day's greatest influences are and then she went uh, The Clash and he went yeah and another band and he says who's this other band a band called The Stiff Little Fingers Stiff Little Finger. and you can feel a ripple in the room going <laughs> in Belfast like, and then he sticks on Suspect the Vice and the hair, the hair back of my neck is still standing up now actually and it's the whole face soundtrack. just went yes <laughs> <laughs> and I rang him and held the phone up. Unbelievable! <laughs> and everybody was yeah. And the chair went on like for ages. It was brilliant. And that that I think it was ninety seven, ninety eight or something. Yeah, yeah. That was the first film I'd watched where it was over. I, I, I this is how old I am. I rewound it back to the start <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and watched it again. I fucking yeah, loved yeah. it. Oh, but it, they also mentioned Bell and Sebastian too. Yeah, yeah. And I was that's like, right. I can't believe Bell and Sebastian's been mentioned yeah. in the fucking movie. It was uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, first time I seen it was when I was at uni and we had we had no oil. So we used to burn Argos catalogs trying to keep us warm. Ah. 
and then the rest of, so that would keep one person warm that would no, keep that. one person warm <laughs> yeah. and the rest of us would sit under a blanket smoking <laughs> sure and body heat and somebody said you've never fucking seen David Ellie and yeah it's, it's one of my that's top 10 is brilliant great show, yeah. have you yeah, seen I, Walk ironically, Hard ironically it's one of your top 10 yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all lists it's all lists the, um, Tim Robbins in the two is fucking brilliant as well oh, I watched the film the other day that's, and I laughed so hard I think I missed half of it uh, Walk Hard the Dewey Cox oh, story Dewey Cox story oh yeah What's that? John C. Reilly, isn't it? Or, ah, John C. Yeah, John C. Reilly. Yeah. It's, it's, the f- it's like a piss It's like a piss take of Walk the Line. And Walk Ray. Line yeah. Yeah. Oh! It's like a comedy version of like... A, a he's a country mix. singer. Yeah. So uh, the, the, the opening scene is he's about to do a gig, like a reunion gig. Uh-huh. And uh, it's like that movie, he's standing against the wall with the guitar around his back and there's like a silhouette. And they're like, oh, we, need, we need Mr. Cox. You're on stage in two minutes. And one of his friends just goes, gotta hang on. Dewey Cox has to, think, has to think about his entire life before he goes on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just goes... Mississippi 1946 <laughs> like, there's a line where he talks about he's trying to get sober and he's like uh, I don't want to go into that room I'm trying to or what is it I'm afraid of the temptations yeah. and he walks around the corner and there's four black guys like a yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal <clears throat> I noticed that the other day on Ferris Bueller's Day Off that the principal I don't know what his name oh, is super. fucking unreal isn't it? Yeah, the look really. just his eyes yeah, it's it's just <laughs> unreal yeah he's in Beetlejuice as well it's another pretty film ah, that's right yes pretty film great show Right, uh, he he's in Spinal Tap as well. No, he's not in Spinal Tap. No, 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 no. Uh, guest. guest. Yes, yeah, 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 sure. Right, what's Colin's opinion of the local scene? Well, considering uh, you're part of it, you're going to have to have it. Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's uh, healthy. Yeah. That's the thing. There's, there's always been people that sort of popped up over the years, but they disappeared because they were shite. <laughs> <laughs> just, there was one guy... But you do find that every three or four years there's a new cycle of ones come up and some stay. Yeah, some stay, but that's what happens. The you know, that's, what, that's the way it yeah. happens everywhere else. That didn't happen here forever. Nobody came forward. Nobody bothered their arse for years yeah. at the beginning. Nobody... And there, were, there was a guy, especially with with Kilty and all doing as well as yeah. doing, you would expect that would inspire some more to come. But I think it's because there weren't enough gigs outside of Belfast. That's why. Yeah. And uh, and this sounds nuts, but now that you can live here and you can scoot into Belfast and back, or yeah. you can you know you can travel a lot. Yeah, 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 a yeah, lot yeah. You know, and people have a car. Yeah. Like, like there's you nothing know. but then the north there's more than an hour and a half yeah. away an hour Aye. 40 you know what I mean and that, it isn't weird to and, travel yeah. to go and do a thing yeah. in Belfast or to go out for a night in Belfast or to go out in Derry or whatever but you don't have to do that anymore you can you can gig somewhere locally Yeah. so that's healthy there. and then it means when you go then to do a bigger gig you've got a a few gigs under your belt and yeah. you know it's not yeah. and they sort terrifying of know, yeah. and you don't have the guy that runs on in moons that it used to be there used to be a guy and he only did three gigs <laughs> and all three gigs he'd lose his shit with the audience and then uh, show them his hole and then leave the stage. Yeah. <laughs> From the north? Yeah. From and now he's hosting the blame game. Who's the blame? For me hole. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Right, uh, ah, here, hey, that's a great way to start a question. Yep. Ah, here, hey, just wanted to ask. That's another good one for the postal service. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here, hey, uh, just wanted to ask where does Colin enjoy gigging the most? We've had this before, yep. and also that the dipper spot on the Y Road just before Twinner's <laughs> scrapyard. I love that uh, guy, does that <laughs> every couple of weeks. Just- <laughs> He says, what's on the road? The dipper's been spotted on the Moy Road just before Trainer's Back Scrapyard. <laughs> that gets me every time. All the time. <laughs> uh, right, Colin and Mickey would be two of my favourite comedians in the land. But nice. but I'd say they represent two different factions of comedy. Oh, right. The Bartlett's Geddes' Todd's, and then there's the Murphy Delamere's, which sounds like a good band, McGarry's, etc. What do you think are the biggest differences or similarities between those two groups, if any? Age. Yeah. <laughs> age and the TV. And age and hair. <laughs> That's, well, I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't... We, see, we would have... Uh, like, with, with Shane and Colin and you, whatever, we would talk about the Blame Game Boys, you know, as if there was a different tier, mm-hmm. you know... Mm. Uh, I know there's not a tear, but it's the way we would have looked upon it. You know what I mean? That, that there were factions or groups. But mm. Which he's not trying to kiss your ass, but we would have blown Murph's brilliant, didn't he? Ah, <laughs> but oh, he's God. brilliant. Um, I remember this is just a, wee, a story. I remember one time doing I was doing an open spot in the Empire and you were hosting. So I had done five or six and I was always Jack hosting. Oh, so right. you had to come out fucking Punching. swinging, yeah. <laughs> and then so the guy was whoever was on first was on, and I'm fucking I was, I think one of the first times I was meeting you, and I'm like, so come Murph, right? Okay, come on, Mike, come on, be cool. And I was like, right, okay. I'll ask him about the football. What was the score? Now, you know, I fucking hate football, right? So I went, 
any idea what the score in the match was and you were writing notes and you, you didn't even look up you went shit nah I don't care I fucking hate football and I was like <laughs> fuck so did I <laughs> <laughs> so fuck make you stupid fuck <laughs> <laughs> I really hit myself real hard <laughs> I, I was harder than harder than John. John. <laughs> I didn't notice I was a bit of a fucking smack. The elbow bump, we tiny elbow bump. You didn't think it was this close? I know. Can't, can't even wear an armrest. <laughs> Only I was fighting myself. You forget your foreheads before you're here. Uh, <laughs> I know. I know that there is a difference. Is that um that faction you're. Mm. Uh, is the podcast thing? Oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that is the difference. That. And the social media, and the social media it's thing the is the difference. Thing, yeah. How you know? Because even though you were doing stand up and stuff, but the, the when you know you came to notice more is through social media. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's a different thing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, like doing this is totally together. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. we started uh, doing gigs and standing in front of a room full of people who could throw things at you and shout and demoralise you yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know like but I think we had a, a I had a quite a few years and you're the same um, of of nothing you know gigging to six people or you know yeah, shitty, yeah, yeah. shitty yeah, yeah. gigs you know all that sort of stuff and then this changed that yeah. sort of dynamic but yeah. it's a weird thing been able we're, to sell we're, tickets we're, from this is... there's, a, there's a flip side to it I think where podcast audiences sometimes because they're so used to listening to you mm-hmm. they're so used to having you in their house or in their car or whatever there's a weird relationship of going they're like oh where's mate so they'll yeah. just interrupt you. Absolutely. That's so you won't necessarily yeah. get heckled or stuff thrown at you. Yeah, it's it's, worse. Yeah. Yeah, they'll just they'll just agree with you. And yeah. you go, You're interrupting me to tell me I'm funny and I don't fucking I need to either laugh yeah. or tell me I'm shite so I can come back at you. Yeah, that is something. So we're walking into a room or we're walking into a room where nobody knew us. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, and you're walking into a room in South End on sea and uh, it was massive death. <laughs> and uh, uh, and fuck off, you paddy bastard! With, with the oh, hey, yeah. and why don't you fuck off home? <laughs> Different guy, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> not even at the same table. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and you so you're doing that, and you're walking on. You have to do it from scratch, which is well done. But yeah. you know that that is the difference. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That when, and that yeah. familiarity thing is a weird thing because there's no malice behind it. Nope. So it's not hackles nope. like, the, the, nope. trying to be a dick. It's just they genuinely. It's on the background, and they're just used to. Join in the conversation, but if you, but then it you can, you can let that then dictate what your material is. Yeah, because the way you deliver it or the type of material that you do, that it is more conversational like that. Where you're allowing them in and out. You might not want to do that. You yeah, want to go yeah. on and do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. have to stick your guns if that's what you want to do and go on and do gags and. Well, there was that gig hard. I talked to you about in Crumlin, where uh, on my tour I had no choice. I had to deal with. Yeah. And there were just, you know, I had an hour of 60, 55 to 60 minutes of material. It took me an hour and 22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to just deal with the fires and put them out. But again, there weren't any. Yeah. Again, you can't be aggressive with them because they're not yeah. trying to make a dick at each. You're not defensive. They're just like, right, guys, just you know, relax. It's, it's right. all right. I'm here. We can chat. Yeah. It, it, was a, it was a very, very strange uh, feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, so that, yeah, I think that has an influence. It was like the guys who used to come up from Dublin that started in, in the International, where there was no mic. And nobody heckled, no matter how bad you were. Nobody yeah. heckled. Right. And the material that the, the people have found that that did were was a bit more surreal. And so there was a whole tradition of surreal comedy that came up from Dublin. And they come up to Belfast, and they couldn't cope with the empire that was just ah, you fucking <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. <clears throat> and then I went to London, and then said, "What's the hardest gig in London?" And everybody told me, "Oh, up the creek in Greenwich is the hardest gig in London. Sunday night, professional hecklers." And I, right, I'm playing there. Get that out of the way, and then everything will be gravy. Yeah. And I went on. I went. This is fucking grand. Yeah, the yeah. Heckling is brilliant. Yeah. yeah, but I went out swinging like properly. I found the same thing was like whenever I, because I I I'd done maybe three or four gigs for first at the Empire. Yeah, and then it was April the eighth, two thousand eight, April four thousand eight, whatever it was. Uh, so I kind of that was my sort of mini apprenticeship. It was yeah. every couple of weeks or months you get get yeah, a set yeah. ready for the Empire. And you're used to playing one a big room and actually performing stand up, yeah, yeah. as opposed to doing it in a place where people are sitting on top of you. Mm, yeah. Um, and also, yeah, dealing with fucking the bar going, people fuck yeah. up, you can't. You're like, you fuck but up. I think there is a difference in age thing. I think the age thing is a big thing. Yeah. Because, you know what you grew up with is different to what I grew up with, and even the whole social media thing. I never grew up with any of that. I never grew up with. I never grew up with internet or nothing. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing, standing <coughs> cows in the field. Oh, geez, you could waste the day doing that. I'm going to screen save my hours. Uh, that's not a waste. That's, that's heaven. I tell you. 
Uh, right, well, somebody's asking here about uh, the guy that was annoying you in dailies in December, but we'll not give him no, the airtime. No, no. uh, his friend uh, sent me a lovely uh, message. In it I think it's his friend who's asking here, which means that he's probably going to record this and send it on to his men and go, oh, I got them talking about you. <laughs> we're not going to talk about it. I know, and the other boys coming to the gig in, in uh, the Strool in, in the Strool. On yeah. the 11th of February, the night of the boxing. Yep, yep, yep. So I'm not there. Yep. Oh, yep. Anyway, right, but you guys, any recommended cures or remedies for food poisoning? I'm dying here. Well, I would recommend a doctor, probably would be. Yeah, and send a question asking. into a podcast yeah, that's, not, that's not going to go out until no. you're, you're dead. <laughs> I have one. I stop, asking comedians for, stop asking comedians for fucking I did, health advice. I did everything, I did everything. <laughs> dry Went toast. To a chemist, a dry toast, flat coke. <laughs> Contacted a podcast. <laughs> All the usual. Uh, yeah, go and see your doctor. Flat coke. Uh, Hold on tight. Ride that roller coaster. <laughs> I had a, a come bucket, back from Australia. Oh, a, sp- a bucket and a toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, don't yeah. try and do that, you'll yeah, miss. Yeah, yeah. No. And don't try to spin. You end up looking like a safety car. <laughs> Just orange stuff. <laughs> That's what happened uh, to me, anyway. Right, since you're all megastars, what's been your favourite or most memorable fan interaction? On a side note, Uncle Mike, there's still a right tit to be signed on this shirt, hopefully at the Kosh at the end of March. So this is a guy that... This is a fella, I know, um, who <sighs> had a Deck Jaren Yum's... Uh, t-shirt mm. and asked me to sign it and of course i i've never signed a tit before okay so i wanted to sign one and so i've signed one side he's waiting for mickey for the other one oh, is he getting them tattooed um i've I, heard of that i don't think so it's on the t-shirt so it's, hopefully it's not yeah uh, he wouldn't let me do it on his skin what's been the most favorite or the most memorable fan interaction you have a great story that came to life at the all-star hall <laughs> that was a, oh the, 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 taxi. the taxi driver <laughs> yeah. yeah there was uh, a guy Knocked on the door, two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning, something like that. I went downstairs asleep. <laughs> and on the door, taxi driver's there and uh, he was returning the son's wallet, he'd left it in the taxi. And uh, he says, Oh, you're oh, you're a man off a of fucking TV, aye. <laughs> Can I get a photograph? I think you're shit, but the way flows you. You know, this <laughs> aye, that, that old classic. <laughs> and um, yeah. it never doesn't hurt now. <laughs> so I stand there in a in genuinely in a Mr. Happy t shirt. And uh, going, what the fuck? And uh, like, oh, uh, I'm only really woken up, glasses like that. And um, so he's there, click. And then so I'm telling this in the Ulster Hall. And gets a big laugh, and then your man goes, "Here, do you want to see the photograph?" He's in. He's, <laughs> he's at the fucking gig. <laughs> Six rows back. I couldn't believe it because you'd done it the whole time, and I was like, "He's not fucking here, is he?" Yeah. And then you had to go and run out. The next thing he's showing it, everybody else, Hummer, that's Hummer. <laughs> and then they start laughing, and there is a photograph. Honestly, there we go. I couldn't believe it. I was fucking brilliant. Yeah. It? Uh, was, I heard a brilliant one once, and it was Kevin Gildee had a, had a uh, somebody at a gig heckled him, and uh, but slowly and throughout his set. And uh, she said, uh, an onion. And then he went, what? And then she just said nothing, and then he kept going. <laughs> and he said, uh, two carrots. And uh, a little bit further, a leek. And this went on and on and on. And uh, she says, what is this? She says, a recipe for soup. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> I just love how fucking random is that it? is. They thought that through. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She has a set list. This is uh, <laughs> the, the timing was amazing. It was like let it go for a joke, joke and a half. <laughs> just you wonder how long did she go to? Did you get as far as a, a pint and a half of stock? Yeah, <laughs> before he goes <laughs> the whole recipe. That's there. a recipe for stock. <laughs> <laughs> was there someone else in the room going? What was that again? <laughs> yeah. What was that? after carrots? <laughs> uh, right, not so much a question, but I found a good few years my. Oh. I fought a good few years myself, and after seeing Mick on the pads and Belfast Live, I'm surprisingly impressed with his hands. Technique and power is there, just needs to work on his range. I know, but a cat with wee dwarf arms. That's sweet T-Rex That arms. sounds all innuendo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Euphemisms and innuendo. That's Technique it. and power is there. Oh, but yeah. I've seen him on his pads. <laughs> uh, hi there, lads. Question one. Just wondering, uh, lads, what are your thoughts on the odds of each fight at the Comedian's Charity event? Uh, number, well, these questions were supposed to be I wrong. was thinking of that too when you were mm-hmm. talking earlier. Who, like, who's the favourite in your fight? Realistically, if there was odds. In my fight? I would say it would be you would be the favourite. Yeah. We could work uh, through Not, not even bragging. Yeah, I think it would <laughs> like, be him. Yeah. Uh, but then, again, I'm not very aggressive and uh, like a punch in the lip when the guy went, right, go today. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think I think Rachel McPeak's going to beat Claire Corrigan. Okay. I think Cormac Jerry would have... No, I think Ian Thompson might be all right. Uh, Years, wisdom and experience Sean Haggerty's gonna beat Pete giving like a drum 
I think. <laughs> a big lamb bacon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paddy and Paddy and Ronan will be interesting. That'll be a good fight. Because yeah. Paddy McDonald was surprisingly quick yesterday. Right. Uh, and then we went to the boxing. <laughs> 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 Who else is there? Heather Anderson, Sarah Jade. I reckon Heather, maybe. Mm. That'll be good to see. It'll be good. Yeah, she and Johnny Bowe. It's going to be, be, be a close fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hopefully Johnny is surprised, but I don't think so. Uh, right. What or who influenced Colin to get into the comedy scene, and has he always had an artistic side? Uh, drink. <laughs> <laughs> on both things yep. yeah. um, I know drunks you, you, you've drawn many a pint okay. <laughs> 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 uh, I know drink was, yeah there was an ex officer in Queens who uh, convinced me to, to compare a gig in Queens that was my first gig was a comparing gig oh fuck and, what a um, start. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I went I oh, don't want to that where is it <laughs> He says, oh, it's Wednesday week. Down on, I can have seven minutes, seven minutes with a comparing. All right, what's that mean? <laughs> Never been to a gig. Seeing which one's the best. Yeah. I was like, I'll compare. Hey, that boy's good. <laughs> that one's a pound. That one's 50. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so uh, <coughs> booze and uh, youth and idiocy and <laughs> thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, the older you get, the, like, people say you get fewer inhibitions when you get older. It's bullshit. When you're young, you're an idiot. Yeah, you don't know. I, what. If somebody said to me, "No, do you want to just start stand up?" No. Yeah, <laughs> not absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But at, at twenty, whatever age I was, twenty. There's no limitations. Yeah, there, that is, yeah. Twenty four, twenty five. I was like, going, yeah, get on, I'll do it. Oh, Give man. it a go." And then you, the artist, the artistic stuff, because I mean, you do also because sometimes it, have you seen some of his paintings? Because I, yeah. I, I am, I am uh, an autistic, artistic person. In what way? And as I can't do anything, <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, terrible. I've yeah. always been uh, like music was my thing, creative, yeah, 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 yeah. but art wasn't just couldn't do it. And I watch you mm. some of your pictures or look at them, and you d- you did one with a black leather sofa, right? Aye. And and I'd be sitting there going, I don't know where you even start to fucking. I just, I just can't get my head around it. But you you went to art school, right? No, I know I went to art because did all that, and then did the other for years, and then just started doing it again. Five six years ago, and um, yeah, so I'm in with a documentary, then a documentary, what? yeah, <laughs> an arts documentary. That's good. It is. It's song began in February. Well, Showing at the black box, talking about the art. <laughs> <laughs> That's what boys used to say to me when I was at art school. Like, oh, I'd go back home to Dan Patrick, and he'd be in Christmas having a pee in the bogs, and boys would walk in. He's still the art boy. <laughs> Like the joinery, the plumbing, <laughs> the, the, the spark. Uh, yeah, uh, it has to be that. Yeah. And the singular, it's not yeah. the arts. No, the art. It's still the art. Still the art, boy. <laughs> I'm working away at it. Good man. <laughs> sure you paint, put the paint on the right way out, boy. <laughs> All that shit. Yeah. So yeah. it is, yeah, honestly, beginning of uh, February on BBC One, I think it is. Nice one. Yeah, yeah. Well, deadly. Okay. Uh, I'm going right. to paint the Ulster Hall. Oh, yeah, Mark color? McCartney's fucking head. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there's, yeah, there's a question from Mickey in the box, and again, we'll move on to that. Uh, no, no, the, no, 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 I'm sorry to answer any question you have. All right, for sunglasses, for coat. King. <laughs> is there is there any chance of Mickey recreating the famous Jerry Lewis boxing sketch with Mar- Rocky Marciano? I think only Mickey has good enough footwork to do it. Also, have you seen the white card bullshit that was brought into the Portuguese league? We get some random fucking questions <laughs> of like <laughs> the fuck. Sports, is it football? Yeah. Don't so know. they brought in a white card, uh, like a uh, medical, temporary thing. I thought you said white car. No. <laughs> I thought you said white car. Uh, do you know the way they've been talking about, like, rug- too fast. one boy driving around? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 right, here, over here, boys. <laughs> Handbreaker. <laughs> you know, in, uh, in rugby, the way they have a concussion we'll sort of cam. temporary. Oh, so right, right, right. white card. Isn't it? Anyway. Okay. Uh, could you do the... Do you know the sketch? Do you know yeah. the sketch? What is yeah. it? Where he's all... Fucking we jazz yeah. them. All right, yeah. well, right. Well, we'll work on that. I know everything about boxing. Oh, of course. <laughs> at yeah. this point, uh, if the boys are looking to impress and cook the best three course meal they can serve, what is it? Uh, oh, I don't know. Um, I like cooking. I do all the Sorry, cooking. I, I do yeah. the most cooking too. Yeah, uh, I don't do the. F- I don't do very fancy cooking. I can do- the thing is. See if you can read, you can cook. That's my wife told yeah. me years ago. She says, if you can read, you can cook. There's a cookery book. Just follow the instructions. It's not fucking difficult. Right. Yeah. You know, if you can put up a piece of IKEA furniture together, you can cook. 
Anybody that says, I can't cook, I burn fucking gravy. Well, stir it, you prick. <laughs> you right. know, it's just turned down the pan. I, I only do half the cooking in my house and I live on my own. <laughs> <laughs> you're, but your body's a temple, you see. That's it, it's a yeah. chapel. Yeah. It's a big empty chapel. <laughs> We're very busy. A chapel is a shitty wee room attached to a church, so yeah. that's pretty uh, good. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, well, I'd, I'd, yeah, I could, anything. I'd eat anything. Oh, mm-hmm. the rest of a hearse. <laughs> Child's arse through a rope chair. <coughs> rope chair. That's good. That'd be cool. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I've been told from the l- by the ladies you could bounce pennies off my ass. Okay. Apart from what Mac- ladies are you hanging about with? I don't know. <laughs> Apart from Mickey's Rocky Dennis forehead, what are your best physical attributes, fellas? Is that Marco? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Marco, I'd bounce fucking bullets off your house with that. <laughs> The Rocky Dennis thing is not, that's not fairly. Like, I don't know. You know the Rocky Dennis thing? No. It's not I mean, fairly Rocky Dennis. My forehead's <laughs> massive. Uh, if I'm thinking right, is this the Cher the, movie? Yeah, The Mask. The Mask. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Point taken. <laughs> and there's another question in there, but because you're so rude to my Mickey, you're not getting your second question being asked. So there you are. That's brought us to the end. You'll be glad yeah, to yeah, hear. Yeah, Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah. Thank you to all our patrons, as always. Yeah, for, thanks very much. Thanks for Mr. Conner for coming in. Did do that? Yeah, I enjoyed Woo! that. Yeah. That was good. Yes, we'll have you back at that sometime. Mm-hmm. There's a pub next door. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's two o'clock. It's five o'clock somewhere, but <laughs> so go and check out uh, check out tickets for Mickey's tour, Colin's tour, uh, and, and by doing that, you'll see all three of us. Weirdly, yeah. Uh, and over to Mick. Thank you very much. Yeah. See you later. Look after yourself. Wash your hands. Uh, bye. <laughs> Wash your hands. That's, that's your sign-up. Yeah, I know. It's, I, I just really work on that. It's fucking show. It's just question. important to do, isn't it? In general, to wash your hands. Wash guy. your meat. Well, I mean the catch for is uh, uh, catch fuck all because COVID's still about. <laughs> Boys screaming across the street. Yeah, wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs> we wash out and wash your meat. <laughs> Should have washed it. One guy shouted, "Mickey, you scabby cunt!" And I, he wasn't even at the gig. That's a different story for a different day. Thanks very much. See you later. <laughs>